TXO, TX, let's go! Oh, I forgot. I didn't do a big. Yes. All right, let's go. All right. Oh, my stuff's all messing. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Hey, welcome, JXO. It's JXO in Texas, even though I docked yeah, him. Nah, you're good. You're good. That's what the TX is for, for sure. Okay. That's just, just, just Texas. <laughs> Chris is here for Justin. Uh, uh, Yo, what's up, Chris? Uh, dude, so you're in Texas. I, I fucking love Texas. And, and you said you're around Austin. Um, Correct. Have you been there your whole life? Yeah, I've been in Texas all my life. I'm in the same area all my life. So, uh, yeah, born and raised what, in Texas. What What do you think about the the new the, the 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 growth in Texas? I know that you guys had a huge spurt, especially over the pandemic. What do you think of it? Is it is it getting crowded? Uh it yeah. I mean, it is getting hectic, but thankfully, I live sort of further from all of that, uh, so it doesn't it doesn't really affect me unless I go into Austin. Then it's like ah, like that shit sucks. But uh, <laughs> you, other than other than that, it's it's all right because it don't affect me yet. So do do you uh do you ever go in to perform? Yeah, we uh we play it come and take it live. So the band Cloud Anchor is the band that I'm in right now, and I do vocals for them. Um, we had a show there, I want to say maybe two months ago, I think, but it's come and take it live, Austin, Texas. Uh, we played there and, uh, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. But yeah, it wasn't too bad going into there and, uh, playing. Yeah. Okay. So come and take it live. That's a music venue. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And then, and then loud anchors is, is now, is that, is yeah. that a metal band? Yeah. Uh, Cloud Anchor. They are um, aggressive pop punk, I guess you can say. Is that is that what you would categorize the? Because I, I know I heard we heard some songs um, before the show started. Is that what you would categorize yourself as, like a, a pop punk, rough pop uh, punk? Like, I don't know what I'd categorize myself as, mm. since I have like acoustic stuff. I have like some. I guess people, if people hear it for the first time, they would say metal stuff. I have my <laughs> dance album on there, you know, so yeah. it's, I don't know what I am, dude. Like, I mean, I'm, I always play metal. I'm always going to play metal. It's always going to be something that I like to do. Yeah. But right now, for right now, the band that I am like in, it's more just, it sort of will fall into the category of pop punk. But since I scream a little bit in it, then it makes it a little more aggressive. So then, uh, let me see. A day to remember. If anyone knows a day to remember, we sort of are falling into that category. So a day um, to remember. I I don't know a day to remember. I'm so out of I'm so out of that kind of music. I I used to love. Like I was just playing Pantera for my son. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Pantera. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they're Texas natives as well. Uh, right. uh Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> I played up corn. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, corn's pretty widely known. But... Yeah, yeah, corn. Boom, da, ba, ba, boom, da, ba. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, corn, man. I think I was, I don't know what grade I was in. Like seventh grade, I think, is when I saw, I saw corn. You saw so, them live? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, yeah. Yeah, man. I, cool. I saw, you know what was cool? I saw corn uh, with Stone Temple Pilots for some reason. Like I don't know why they were together, but they were. But yeah, man, I love those first three albums that they had. Uh, everything else, yeah. I just sort of fell off. You know, I mean, follow yeah. follow the leader. I think was like, I was like, these guys are starting to go for me. Like they were starting to like, like you know, there's some jams on, but I was just like, man, this is not what I'm into. Uh, but you know, I also like Limp Biscuit, so you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, hey, ain't nothing wrong with Limp Biscuit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, Chocolate Starfish, man. Chocolate Starfish is a uh, like my cousin always played that album. So, yeah, well, whatever their first one was, I can't remember. Was uh, was like I feel like they peaked at their first their first album, and then like everything else was like bring some fucking shit tonight. I was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but I, I still I still dig it. I still listen to it every once in a while. Yeah. But yeah, 
they had pretty much all their good stuff, like their early stuff. Yeah, sure. it, and that's fine. You know, like it, nothing against them. I'm not trying to shit on them. It's just for me personally. Yeah. I just thought that. What up, Moving Dutchman? Welcome in, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, it, it was it, just for me. It was like a they just. It was just a falling off point. But but I was playing uh, Pantera. I played Corn for him, and I was like, "What did you think?" He was like, eh, "That's not that great." He, he's like. He called them. They sound like clickers, uh, which clickers are one of the the zombie monster things on The Last of Us. He's gotcha. like, they, he's like, they sound like clickers, and I'm like, okay. Uh, but but uh, he loved Pantera. He was all about Pantera, and I played old Metallica for him, and he's just like, eh, it's okay. He just he was all about Pantera. Fucking hot So so I'm I'm assuming. He'd probably like a lot of southern, southern, southern rock, southern metal, that type of I don't genre. Know. I don't know. I, I think he just likes yelling and like fast and heavy guitar riffs. That gotcha. <laughs> like gotcha. Metallica yeah. had that, but like Metallica also has James Hetfield going like, you know, unforgiven yeah. nah, in doing yeah. all that shit. He's not really yelling. Sure. He's kind of growling, and then everything has to end with a ah. You know, this is like yeah. hello. Ah. You know, yes. it's like goodbye. Yep. What's That's for that. dinner? You know, it's That's just exactly it. Will somebody walk this dog. <laughs> Daryl coming in yep. with the yo. Uh, but yeah, man. No, so I, I really liked your spectrum of music that you have, and you know, I think moving mm-hmm. Dutchman. How <laughs> dare you, sir? Thank you for gift subbing JXOTX. I appreciate gift that. Sub. Appreciate that. And look at that. A live thank you. A live thank you. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you moving Dutchman. Uh, but I, I dig your wide spectrum of music that you're doing. Is uh, Did you kind of grow up on a, uh, on a spectrum of music? Like, you know, I, I don't know. I know metal heads. There's some mm. like straight metal heads and that's all they listen to. But then, I mean, like at one point, I, I don't know, at some point, it just seems like all that. Before aggression. metal. Before metal, there was, uh, I want to say I was singing and dancing probably when I was like, fuck, probably like four, four or five. So Michael Jackson. Oh yeah. Let's uh, go. I grew, I grew up, I grew up on Michael Jackson. I grew up on a lot of eighties stuff because my mom. So anything that was like eighties, super popular, anything that was dance, uh, Prince. Um, I grew up on all of that. And then probably when I was like in fifth grade or sixth grade and I was like break dancing and stuff like that. So also, also was doing all that stuff with it. Damn, you're a break um, dancer. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I actually had some moves, you know what I'm saying? Dog? <laughs> but that was back in the day. Um, but then when I got to like sixth grade or seventh grade, it was like Lincoln park, corn, mud vein, limb biscuit, all that type of stuff was coming out around that time. But also we had, the house music and trance music and all the techno stuff that was coming from like European stuff. So that was coming on the radio and everything like that. So I was really liking all that stuff. So growing up with like basically like any like nineties, early two thousands techno is what I was listening to. Mm. Plus all the new metal stuff that was coming out with like Lincoln park corn, all that stuff. And then obviously, obviously uh, you throw in some Creed in there every once in a while. And then, uh, <laughs> Hell, that's and 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 still, I was still listening to all the '80s stuff. I was still listening to Michael Jackson. I was still listening to all that stuff. Mm. So everything's just flushing into my brain, like yeah. basically at one time. And yeah. then uh, from probably like fourth, and then before all that, fourth grade, I had a Walkman. Yeah, I'm aging myself. I had a Walkman. Let's go. And I would I would sleep in bed, turn it to like the top 40 station that we had in town, and I would just sleep and have that playing. So there would be so many songs that would just be playing in rotation in top 40 that I might not know it now, but if I listen to a little bit of it, I can probably, it'll come back to me because it's it's there. And I did that from like third grade on to like 10th grade. So it was wow. just constant music, constant music, constant music. So, and, it, and obviously it's all genres of stuff right. that was coming out, whether it was pop, whether it was r&b whether it was like heavier rock um so yeah m- m- music it just it's just there's so much that's in my head the only thing i don't listen to is the hano music 
Ah, so, you yeah. like that, huh? Oh, come on, mm-hmm. man. Because my it makes me physically sick. Why? My grandma, what? my grandma played it all the time, and <sighs> that's it. But uh, reggaeton, anything that's reggaeton, reggaeton, anything, is that yeah, is. and yeah, yeah, I'll listen to that. That's perfectly fine. But like the Hano stuff, nah. I mean, I'll listen to Selena. Hey, I listen to, well, I listen come to on, Selena Cumbia King, the Cumbia Kings. Oh, okay. I listen to Cumbia Kings. You know, Cumbia like, is dope hey, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Damn. I, thought, I don't I don't clearly hate my race. It's just it's just it's just that. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> hating on Obuela's <laughs> fucking music. No, so, yeah, it, I love it, it, I love uh like cause my mom would play uh Vicente and uh, just all the classics, man. I love that shit, dude. Just that mm-hmm. big boisterous bombastic voice. Oh, you know, like that mm-hmm. shit is so mm-hmm. tight, man. Uh, that, that yeah, I love it, man. Uh, but yeah, I, I get it though. I get it. It's just like how some people are like, man, I can't fucking listen to country. But yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. all right. And by the way, Daryl, uh, Daryl Watson, y'all, go and give Daryl a follow too. He's actually been a a a, a what is that? Daryl has actually been on the show before, and uh, he is a. Uh, uh he's a he's a rapper and uh y'all should check out his website if i can get it to work and not okay there you go go check out daryl y'all he, he's a bad boy go check him out uh <laughs> dude fuck it it's selena i mean how can you how can you hate selena <laughs> I, yeah. right like come on bitty bitty bum bum shit yeah there don't you get go. me started baby don't get me there started uh the the yeah i have i have family in san antonio and i got family down in uh um near brownsville and stuff uh so yeah my mom my mom's from san antonio okay so i so always every year we'll try to go down there and she'll show us where she was from and all that stuff so it's cool yeah dude san antonio is a very nice city i i really enjoyed it like uh, I enjoy going there. It's uh, it's very nice. It's pretty clean, you know. The river walk is fancy or whatever. It's just like mm-hmm. it's a it's a cool little spot. They also got this like really rad ass music store that has just just like old pedals, old gear. I can't remember what it's called. It's some fucking crazy ass store, but it is sick, dude. Like I was in there for probably like three hours just dicking around. Uh, my reggae band that I play with, uh, we played, uh, South by Southwest a couple times and sure. we, uh, you know, like we, we also booked some shows in San Antonio. So we had some time to kick it down there and dude, it is just, it, it, fuck dude, I, man, Texas is awesome. People talk shit about Texas and I think it's more politically driven. You know yeah, I mean? that's all it is. Yeah. Cuz like when people are here they do enjoy it. It's f- I think it's just I think it's just when it comes down to it it's just political reasons, but Yeah, it's it. if people are fucking nice, even the white women have ass. It's just like, let's go, man. Let's go fucking Texas. <laughs> uh <laughs> Hey, and and the tax system isn't bad either I hear. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty <laughs> nice. You don't Shit. Is there? Uh, it, ain't, it ain't killing me. No. So. Yeah. Well, then you you see like all these people from California going there and be like, oh my god, I didn't know you could live like this. Yeah. I mean, I have some I have some friends that are like in New Jersey, mm. and they came and visited, and they're like, yo, a bag of chips is this like it's only this much, and they're getting like he's like the same bag of chips is like probably like six dollars where they're at, and it's like. Two ninety nine or like one seventy five here, right? And so they're just like tripping out with the prices. Like he was like looking at cereal, and he was like, "It everything's so cheap. What the hell?" So he wanted to buy stuff and take it with him because it's just so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stock up. <laughs> yeah, man, New Jersey's wild. New Jersey's wild. Yeah. I think that's where Daryl's at too. I don't know, Daryl, if you're still here, you're in New Jersey, right? Let me know. No, like I had friends who wanted to buy housing in Jersey, and they're just like, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, who can live it? And the and, and the uh, the sales tax in Texas is six point two five percent. When I left California, it was like ten point five percent on sales tax. I'm in Ohio now. What's the sales tax in Ohio? Ohio, you know what? People shit on Ohio. They're, Ohio 5.75. Let's go, Ohio. What's there up? You go. 
living in these cheap places, son. That's how it goes. I just found out that Ohio has a, a stand your ground law too. Like you could, you just shoot motherfuckers who come in your house. <laughs> yep. like, is, yep. is, is that how it is in Texas as well? I I know that's how it is in Florida. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think I think here we basically have it. I think I think if I'm not mistaken, I think we this we disregard the whole uh, concealed weapon thing. So now we can just uh. carry without having concealed. Oh, you don't so, need a permit anymore. Yeah, I think that's what they just did. So uh, now we can just be strapped whenever. Yeah, so. Ohio too, man. Ohio too. Yeah. They just removed the permit. Like, you don't need a permit as long as you pass that background check. Baby. Yeah, yeah, just pass that background check. That's it. <laughs> Strap that's up. It, Strap I up. Remember, I remember when I got my, because I have two ARs. Let's and, uh, go, ARs. So, uh. I remember when I went and got those and did the background check and stuff like that. People say it's so easy, man. No, it ain't. You gotta sit there. You gotta. They really look through your shit, and you gotta like for give all these documents. You gotta make sure you know everything's clean. But wow, that yeah, that, so. that sounds stressful. What? What? Yeah. I, I mean, I, thankfully, I've never been locked up, so I mean, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> but I'm just like, I was. But I'm connected to so many people. All of my relatives are locked up. Everyone's <laughs> locked up. All my friends are locked up. So I'm just like, shit. They're going to say like, well, maybe I don't know. So yeah, man. Yeah. But well, yeah, it's like, um, it's like uh, here they literally it's a five minute process and the only thing you need is a valid driver's license <laughs> and they're just like you're good bro yeah <laughs> go ahead <laughs> you want some hollow points yeah. with that uh we got a deal yeah. on that shit <laughs> it, yeah nah it, it took a little bit it took a little time so hey but you know what man uh i mean you know like in lieu of what's going on and, and ars those assault rifles and stuff i mean I, I don't know. You obviously are pro gun. If you're gonna go out and buy some hardware like that, uh, what mm. what do you think? What do you think uh, some of the solutions should be on this whole? You know, all these school shootings and shit. I mean, what? There's a there's a lot of veterans that are looking for jobs. There's a lot of veterans that would be willing to work at schools just as security. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's one way to get our veterans back in there. And cause there's so many homeless veterans mm. and there's a lot of them that want to work. And there's a lot of them that would be willing to do security. And I feel like that would be the first line of let's do something like that. Let's secure the schools. I mean, when my school, when I went, we had metal detectors, we had cops all the time, all, all around the school, all around the campus. And I'm like, I'm so surprised that there's places that don't have that. Cause I'm used to like, Hey, we have cops roaming all the time, like down the hallways, we have cops just everywhere. And so, um, like I would say, I honestly would say start with the veterans, get them in there or even like retired cops that still want to like do something, um, get them, you know, in there as security or something. I feel like that would be the, one of the best solutions just to, for one, we're protecting the kids. Number two, we're getting jobs. So I feel like that would be it. So you're, you, you, you don't think that we should just ban all guns? No, because the bad guys are going to have guns too. Well, wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. So you're telling me, you're, you're telling me that if we take all of, all the guns away from people and make it illegal, that criminals will obey that law? Let's see, like both of my cousins are locked up doing 20 years right now. They were felons, and they still had guns on them all the time. <laughs> I don't know how they got the guns, but hey, they locked up, but they had them. Fuck, dude. <laughs> I, I, no, I, and, and I, I tend to agree with that, man. I tend to agree with that, that concept. It's like, man, if we're taking everyone's guns then the only people who are gonna have guns are the people who don't give a shit about laws <laughs> because yeah i mean like if they're gonna if they're gonna do what they do break the law all the time anyways why would they even give a shit it's like oh sweet now i can just bust into people's homes and i don't have to worry about them fucking just popping off it's cool yeah. like whatever it, it's just it, it's like a run on uh, it's just a run on law-abiding citizens. Yeah, we all need weapons. Oh, Daryl's all about <laughs> Daryl's like, let's go. Uh, well, in in uh, yeah, man. It, there's people. I mean, all these all these celebrities have about like ten to twelve people surrounding them at all times, armed, 
armed, armed. ready to go. Yeah. But our schools don't. Yeah. Including lawmakers too. Uh, lawmakers. Yeah. Lawmakers, everyone's mm. in politicians. Oh, they all got armed security. Mm. And if we care that much about the children, then we should be arming them just as much as we should be as the politicians. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it's all for me and none for thee. That kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, um, there's the, the, you know, the idea of, and I know a lot of people who are very much against guns and, um, they, they, they think of armed security in the school is only going to lead to more violence. Uh, mm -hmm. the guns only lead to violence. And I'm, I don't think that that's true. I think that fucking violent people lead the violence and that if you have somebody who's properly vetted and who's, you know, in the school, if you, you, you get, and, and it's a sad state of an affair. I agree that, that we have to do these, these, uh, these metal detectors and we have to have armed guards in our schools. I do think it's a sad state, but there's 400, what, 450 million firearms out there, and there's only 330, 350 million people. There's more fucking firearms than there are people in this country. So mm. I don't know how how are we even going to go back to, how would we even ban those? Like, what would, in, in, in like Lockheed Martin and all these gun manufacturers and all these people who are supplying our government with guns, I, I just don't buy that they would allow that in the first place either because they that, that's how they make money. They sell the government. Yeah. I mean, they're making money off all the guns and weapons they're making for you to go blow up Russians and Ukraine and shit. So it's like, I don't think, I think it's all, when you see these politicians, they're like, Good to, we got to ban all guns. Like Joe fucking Sleepy Byron, uh, he's out there, oh, we got to ban stuff, you know, it's, it's, fuck, dude, shut the fuck up, like, you know that you're just, you're just playing a part, it's all theater, it, because yeah. you know that who pays for your campaign is fucking these gun manufacturers, who's paying for, uh, most, you, all these politicians are being funded by these weapon manufacturers, pharmaceutical man, manufacturers, I, anybody with a large amount of money, they're willing to take it because that's how disgusting our, our, our political system has gotten. But yeah, man, it, I don't think that there is a way to sort of get away from it at this point. No. Nah, yeah. It, and I mean, people are just messed up. Like there are, there's so many people who are just messed up. Like it, guns guns aren't what are killing people it's the people behind it yeah the people who, who have it they're the ones who are fucked up in the head and they're the ones that are taking it to that extreme and doing what they're doing it's not the gun's fault it's the person behind it right. i mean i can get a pencil and stab someone in the throat and it's like are we going to ban pencils <laughs> yes no <laughs> uh, if you know like it's 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 one of those things where there's all these drunk driving cases everyone's getting drunk everyone's driving killing people well, are we going to ban cars? No, we're not going to ban cars. We deal with the person who was behind the wheel, yeah. if they're still alive. So it's the whole just outright banning of guns. I don't, I don't sit back and nah, that ain't that ain't gonna work. Yeah, it, I think that uh, if you're a responsible human being, you're going to be responsible. I mean, a gun is just another tool, in my opinion. It's just a fucking mm -hmm. tool. Just like a hammer is, just like a knife is. I, I, I'm a chef, so like I also use really sharp fucking knives, right? So yeah, and, and those kill people all the time. And like in the UK, there's always the, <laughs> they took the guns, and now just people are walking around sticking motherfuckers with knives. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it, 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 it's a slippery slope. And I was yeah. actually we were talking uh, to a guest last week uh, about how. Um, that that there is no second amendment there is no first amendment without the second amendment so like this idea of freedom of speech without the second amendment to sort of without the uh, the ability to have guns there is no first amendment how are you going to defend your right to speak to power because that's what the first amendment's about is speaking to power you know speaking uh, against uh bad ideas you know it, having conversations and trying to work stuff out before it comes to violence or or whatever you know it, it's it, yeah. it's a it's a really important part and what really sets us apart from other countries in the world and it's it's just uh you know i and i get i get the idea from other people 
and I, I see where they're coming from. And and these things are good intentions, right? They, they, because they're yeah. thinking, no more guns, no more violence, and and or gun <laughs> violence. And and I get that. And I don't yeah. want to see kids getting shot up. This is horrible. And, yeah. and <laughs> And the fact that people were so concerned about, like this last one, that people were so mad about, they were misgendering this psycho who walked into this school. And it's mm. like, you know, I'm not against transgender people at all. I mean, live your life. Mm. I love you. But, but like, I don't give a fuck if you're fucking, you know, what you are. You just went and slaughtered a bunch of children. Yeah. So, like, fuck you. Like, who cares who this person? We shouldn't even be showing their face on the news. Like, we shouldn't yeah. even know this person's name. It's like this yep. individual went in there and decided to take lives and fuck that person. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man, it, it's a. I know it's a tough thing. I know it's a tough. Um, it's a tough subject. But I, I, I think that what makes America so special. And yeah, I think we're special. I don't give a fuck what people think. Uh, <laughs> I like America. Yeah, I, yeah, no, we are. We are special, man. And and fuck, it is the fact that we have the right to carry. We have the right to fucking defend our speech, and defend our land, and defend our our homes, defend our family uh, by any means. So you know, eat a dick. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not in it. Uh, but yeah, man. So you were uh, you you were talking on your uh, on your stream yesterday about uh, you were dealing with some band stuff. I mean, how do you deal with band drama when it when it happens? Uh, like, uh, are you someone who? I mean, and and here's the thing. I, I as a singer, as a lead singer, um, you uh, you know, I I've worked with many lead singers. Um, there tends to be a little ego involved, and I'm not trying to say, put that on you, but how, how do you mm. handle it? With my experience with lead singers, I definitely have ran into ego and yeah. ran into, you know, like them having to be right and all mm. this shit. So I, I don't know. We're, we're in an honest opinion of yourself. Yeah. How do you handle these kind of situations? Well, thankfully, here's a good part. Whenever those bands disbanded, the bands that disbanded, I wasn't a vocalist. I was either playing guitar or I was playing bass. Mm -hmm. So um, that was basically it, like with that. Like, so the guitar, when I got kicked out of this one band, it was just because, oh, they felt that I wasn't doing my part. So it was, it was a Christian band. So mm -hmm. at that time, they were like, well, we feel like you're not doing your part in the ministry. You're not like, you know, talking about it as much. And I'm really chill. Like, I'm really chill with stuff, so I don't really talk about stuff. I don't, I'm not going to push it down on people's throats or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm really chill with it. So they took me being that way that I don't really care about it. Yet I'm like, well, that's just who I am. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm not going to, like, start preaching and preaching and all that stuff. I'm chill. So that's why I got kicked out of there. So that was just, that was just for that reason, so guitar-wise. Um, bass-wise, uh, when I was in the band, they were playing bass. A lot of people just started life either getting married, having kids, moving different cities. So it was like that. So I, I thankfully didn't have to deal with so much of egos. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I've seen that firsthand when we've been with other bands and they're talking like about them or like the other band will come to me and say, man, this guy, like he thinks he's the hot shit, but he's not good because everyone's like saying after the show, like, Hey, good set or Hey, you did really well, but they know that it was horrible and they just don't want his feelings. And so then it's just like, shit, like I understand that. Like I get that. Like the, one of the things is I always, I hate doing, but it definitely helps is if I played a show, I get someone to report it and I'll listen back to it. And I'll be like, do I sound good or I sound like shit? If I sound like shit, then I need to figure out what I did, what I didn't do to like fix that. Cause I don't want to sound like shit live, you know? So, um, that's one of the reasons why I came back to streaming, just singing and doing stuff like that. For one, it works my muscle Two, It just helps me get comfortable having people interacting while I'm doing stuff. Cause I have to interact with people. Um, so it definitely is helping me get back into the groove of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, when it, when it comes to a vocalist type thing, like with the band that I joined, right. Um, I joined them because the vocalist moved. He was, he was moving and that band recorded at 
the same studio where I recorded my solo stuff at. And so they're like, hey, we like his stuff. Can you you talk to the producer, the recorder, the mixer and stuff like that? Um, They're like, hey, could you get him, you know, our info and could we get in contact with him? We we like his stuff. We want to see if he'll try out for our band. So that's how they got me into the band. Um, I went, I tried out. Uh, they liked my stuff, so that's how I joined. And then after the first show, it was all these people coming up and saying, whoa, you're so much better than the other vocalist. Whoa, this and that. And I'm just like, I'm for, for one, I'm like, all right, I know people are just trying to be nice. But number two, there is some truth to that because I've listened, I've watched them live before with that vocalist. So I was like, okay. I see where they could be coming from. I might be a little more energetic. I might have, I'm screaming for one. So making it a little more heavier because he didn't do that. And he didn't want that band to be heavy. Mm -hmm. He didn't want them to have certain patterns in their drumming. He didn't want them to have certain riffs because he did. He wanted to stray away as far away from like metal and anything heavy as possible. Mm -hmm. And everyone in that band has a metal background. So it's a little hard to do that when that's all you've been playing, but you're trying to play chill stuff. So um, we had a discussion about that and I was like, hey, well, I have a metal background and I don't want to stray from that. So whatever y'all feel you'll want to play, we'll play it and then we'll just try to make it blend into make it a little softer, but still have those roots behind it. So, um, yeah, so I but yeah, it's just it's just dealing with trying to deal with like sort of fake compliments, but then discerning what's fake and what's not like, are people really being genuine? So it's just, it's just comes down to reading people, honestly, just reading people. If they're really genuine about it, that's cool. I just say, thank you. Cool. But, um, I, the one thing I always try to do is not get like a big head about anything. Cause I know there's always someone better. There's someone right now sitting in their room doing a fucking two hour tutorial practice on how to sing, doing all their warm ups. I don't warm up at all. I don't warm up for shit. I probably should do that, but I, I don't warm up. I don't fucking do all the stuff that you're supposed to do. Like yesterday I streamed and I fucking had pizza rolls before I fucking sang. And that's, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. So, so I, I screwed up right there. Um, but like, yeah, you're not supposed to have any dairy or anything. Right. Like that yeah. Do that, so. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't eat dairy before I do this even, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I fucked up yesterday, but it, it went fine. It went yeah. fine, but, no. but still it's, uh, there's, there's people who take it super seriously, take the craft super seriously, have a vocal coach, have all these people doing all these things for them. And it's like, yeah, I know there's people that are doing that. And I'm just, I'm just happy that people enjoy what I do and they come back every time and they listen and they have a good time. So I guess I'm doing something right. Yeah, no, it, there, there is a, the, a, a natural talent that, uh, that people possess sometimes and you seem to have it. Like, is that always been the case? Have you always just been sort of a natural singer? And uh, yeah, cause I, cause I did self like taught myself everything. Like I just self, like I would just watch people observe and be like, okay, that's what he's doing. I can do it. So like whenever I first, the first instrument I learned was bass. And so that was just because I was sitting at church with my cousin and when church would be over the youth guy, he would basically stay, stay there, you know, clean up and stuff like that. But he would just like jam out. And then my cousin would jam out with him. So my cousin would play drums or he'd play bass. And then the youth dude would play uh, just like guitar and sing. And, um, I would just sit there and let them, you know, let them just chill or whatever. And then my cousin was like, well, here's the bass. Learn how to play it real fast. I was like, oh, okay. So he just showed me what to do. And um, we played, uh, what the fuck? Oh, Chevelle. Uh, Chevelle, point number one, Chevelle. He was like, just play that. You're going to get that. It'll be fine. So I just, I learned how to do it that way. And um basically played uh, bass and then the next the next week uh they threw me on drums and so i was like okay like just play the drums here's your foot do this hit the foot whenever you hit the cymbal do that and i was like okay so then i just and i already have sort of like rhythm because i break danced so i was like well i have some type of fucking rhythm Mm -hmm. yeah i can figure this out so um basically just did that and we 
we basically just Chevelle was, I guess, like the first band that I just sat and listened to because we were just playing their songs because the youth guy loved Chevelle. So that's all the stuff he would play. So whether it was point number one, whether it was the clincher, whether it was send the pain below, whether it was like all these songs that they have, vitamin R, all these songs, we just learned how to play them. I learned how to play them through that. And then every Sunday I would see uh, the other youth guy. He was like the head, like the head, head person. They would do like the worship service in the beginning or whatever. So he would just play acoustic. So I would sit and watch and just saw what his fingers did with the chords. And I'm like, okay, that's G, that's C, that's D, that's E. And I, I, after like they were done, I would go up on the stage and I would look at the papers of what he was doing. And it would just say G, E, D, C over the words. So I'm like, okay. So I just went home and uh, I had a guitar. I just didn't really know what to do with it. I was mainly just playing like bar chords basically. I didn't know like four chords. And so that's when I started doing that. So it was like probably two months after I learned how to play bass and drums, I picked up acoustic guitar and I started learning how to do that. And then basically just seeing while playing came naturally. So I didn't really have to worry because I know there's some people who have trouble singing and playing at the same time. So, uh, but that never was an issue for me. But I, I think when people hear that, they're like, oh yeah, well, I guess you did pick up everything pretty quick. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess so. Like, cause I didn't really remember like practicing, practicing, practicing. It was just when I was there, we would play and then I'd figure it out real fast and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the naturals, man, it's always the naturals who just sort of walk in and it's like, oh, I could do this. And man, like I, I, I know a couple of cats who are just like, who, who came up in the church, but I, I don't know what, can, what, can, what denomination, if you don't mind. Uh, it's just Southern Baptist. Southern I mean, Baptist? Just, yeah, it's Texas, so it's Southern Baptist. Ain't like I know you have like Methodists and you have all yeah. this other stuff, but it's just normal Southern Baptist. But it was sort of like on that trendy side, Southern Baptist, because like we weren't non denominational. Because like non denominational usually has like they were like the top of the trends, everything, oh, whether it came to rap, whether it came to the metal, whether it came to rock, <laughs> they had everything. And then Southern Baptist is like slowly behind, like barely getting some stuff. So, yeah. but I, I was going to both. I had friends at non denominational and I had like my cousin's stuff at the Southern Baptist. But I really didn't see a difference besides when it came to music. Right. So, so that was really about it. Yeah. I, I suppose, uh, Pepe, what's up, buddy? Twitch connection error. Is it Stallone or Strom? Are you hacked? I, you, you better stop, Pepe, you little troll. <laughs> He's a little troll. Um, the but I I I I do think I do think you you do like you work out right. You're, you're yeah. I'm right. a uh, personal trainer since 2014, but I've been training since I was like 12. So it, okay, so so you so you probably ripped. Huh? I think I think I went on your other. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go he just just busted out those 22 inch pythons baby he's gonna fucking yeah. he's gonna fl he's, he's gonna fly over to pepe's country and fucking show him a thing or two i don't know that was dumb. <laughs> uh man i'm trying to find this um i'm trying to find this thing on my no that's not it his hair whack there i'm just where is it? Hold on. I'm sorry. Why are you gay? Yeah, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> this isn't for. This isn't aimed at you, but why are you gay? That that's like my favorite fucking thing in the world. Well, you know, you know exactly what that is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that yep. shit yep. is my favorite. <laughs> Pepe. Pepe. Why are you gay? <laughs> but uh, what was it? Yeah. So, but. I only started working out because obviously I had an older brother who uh, worked out all the time. Obviously. And, and so then I was just like, well, I need to work out because I, I think that's what you're so supposed to you do. You started when you were 12? Started when I was 12. The, okay. Yeah. Damn, dude. Because, because, because uh, that was about 12. I was about 12 or 13 going into seventh grade. So football obviously was something I played. So I had to work out for football. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I'm going to get killed by all these people. So <laughs> Uh, worked out basically all through junior high and high school, but I only weighed like 130 pounds. I was super skinny. Mm. Um, but obviously cause I was running all the time 
because uh, I played receiver and then I did uh, safety and uh, and the linebacker. But I was just running all the damn time and I would run to the gym like so from my house, I'll would, I would jog to the gym I'd work out mm. there. But um, I did all that because uh, for football, but then uh, my junior year, I didn't know that we had a uh, wrestling organization. So I had a friend who was like, hey, uh, you want to come train at me? Because he knew that I liked wrestling, but he just moved into town. So we're just like barely getting to know each other. And he's like, hey, I found this place that does wrestling. I, I know you like wrestling. You want to go check it out? And I was like, fuck yeah, I want to go check it out. So went, um, obviously, since I was, I was 16. So I couldn't legally wrestle unless I got like a waiver. And I thought my, my parents would like be like, no, you're not going to do that because you're, you're getting here with all these old grown ass men, mm. well, you know, you know, like you're going to get hurt. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I want to do this shit. And so they signed the waiver and I started my, I guess, professional wrestling career when I was 16. Wait, is it, wait, so, is it, no, wait, 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 professional wrestling or enter, for- entertainment, homie. Entertainment, oh, baby. let's go. Yeah. Let's Dang, go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go nature boy so, likes so, so it i know a little i know a little bit of the trick of the trades man i know a little bit of that stuff i was around it from while 16 to like 21 and then so, so is that when you started like really uh, trying to bulk up, up, trying, bulk to get, up. trying to get a little bigger yeah, yeah yeah so i did i did wrestling um and i had a friend you know that showed me it he basically he did it with me and then whenever we graduated uh high school uh he went to the navy and so he was gone. So then okay. when he when he left, I sort of lost sort of my connections to it because we would travel from like my town. Then we would go to San Antonio and we would wrestle at this place called ACW. And I think they moved to Austin or like around the Austin area. Um, so. So, yeah, I was I was always in the scene. I remember uh, we went to ACW. Um, and Anarchy Championship Wrestling. That's what it was called. Okay. Um, in San Antonio. And that was like sort of my first time being like at an actual, like, this but is going to be a real event. What, what Were you the good guy or the heel? Uh, I guess they put me as a baby face. So I was, oh. I was a good guy. Oh. Um, but I remember being there. And so the first thing you do, of course, is you walk in back, you're in the back, shake everyone's hand, go through, go through the lineup, shake everyone's hand. Um, then I remember after doing all that, go to the uh, go to the wall and they had the paper. So they had the um, matches already written out. Okay. Who, who, who was already there? And uh, it was pretty cool. I don't know if people knew who Davari was. He was a little short, short dude, Davari. He was hmm. pretty big. Um, he just got released from WWE at that time. So he was at that show. Oh, nice. And I, so, so and there was like, I guess like the beginning of that show, there was like a, it was like a like a Royal Rumble type thing. Oh, so shit. everyone who was there went in, and I remember being behind him. I was taller than him, but he was so fucking big. But you can tell he was all jacked up on steroids because his back was broken out so bad that like I can easily like tap him and that shit would just pop. pop. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, "Fuck, dude! Like he's gonna like take, he's gonna fall back, and it's just it's gonna be bad. There's gonna be something." It was his, he had so much like so much acne on his back. I was Blech. like, "God dang." Um, but, uh, what was it? I remember after that, after that, we went back into the back and, uh, Jerry Lynn was there, a guest referee. He, he was in WWF back then. And then he now works for AEW, uh, like in the back and stuff like that. But Jerry Lynn was there. And I just remember being like, oh shit, I played you when you're on SmackDown too. <laughs> Shut your mouth. He had the little spinning tornado fucking powerbomb. <laughs> I remember, I, re- I was like, holy shit, like I played him in a video game. He's here. Like he was basically giving, like he was giving a pep talk to all the talent. So he was like, hey, you know, some, he watched, I think, three of the matches and he basically was saying like, everyone sucks. Y'all all suck ass. Like this is what you need to do. Like stop fucking around. Like you basically he was discussing psychology of a match mm. you need to take them down you need to slow it down get those highs like get those highs in and then you know just get everyone going like learn the psychology read the room listen to the crowd see what's going on if they're dead quiet then you need to do something 
do something that's going to get people to be like, oh, like just a little pop, just something. But he was discussing psychology, basically, and I just will never forget that. Like being in there, seeing that, being around those people. And um, yeah, it was super cool. But yeah, wrestling. So I like I learned so much just being there and doing all that. And it's always funny because like I'll watch stuff now or I ever since I wrestled, I'll watch stuff now. Not so much as a fan, but just like trying still learning. Mm. So looking and being like, oh, I know what you're doing. Oh, I see what you're doing. Like, I'll call shit before I have, like, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, that, and then boom, 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 they'll do that. And I'm like, okay, like, I know what you're doing. Like, so I sort of have, like, it's fun. It's fun to watch stuff and be like, I remember doing those things. I remember them teaching us those things. Like, okay, I'm going to shoulder tackle you. You're going to drop down. I'm going to look down at you. I'm going to run to the rope. You're going to fall about, but I'm going to go this way. You're going to go that way. That's a whole little thing right there. So um, a lot of people always say like, okay, the whole match is choreographed or like, oh, it's fake and stuff like that. Obviously, the outcome is fake. So we know sometimes, sometimes it's predetermined. So we already know who's going over, who's winning. We already know who's losing. But all the stuff in between it is where it's like, we'll either call it in the ring. So I'm going to say, we're just better to listen to me because we're going to be doing shit on the fly. Or what sort of helps a match go really good is if you have spots so like spots basically they'll teach you when you're wrestling you have about like three to four moves in a spot that makes stuff just go fluid so like that whole shoulder tackle you drop down look at you go to the rope you're gonna flip or go to the rope boom you're gonna get up do your little leapfrog i'm gonna go underneath you that makes everything super fluid mm. but that's basically one spot and then there'll be other spots where people do and you'll see it like all the time like in matches they'll, they'll call that spot or they'll do that just to get some smoothness just to get something going with it but um yeah so wrestling was always fun and i, I was obviously i always loved it so being able to do it and learning tricks and learning oh that's how they do it or this is how it goes or mm. that, that it's, it's always fun always fun but music was always something that i could do because i didn't have to be big to do it so <laughs> 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 now, well, uh, Kathosaurus wants to know: Would you rather be the football or be a wrestler's jockstrap? Uh, probably the football. Probably, <laughs> I think you'd rather be kicked around. Than yeah, have, I'd rather be kicked around. Then have sweaty balls yeah. bouncing off you. <laughs> yep. yep. What was your What was your name? Zytro. Zytro. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Everybody, yeah. welcome to the stage, Zydro. Yeah, so, I mean, it was the typical, hey, you're new, no one knows you, so here's this mask, put it on, no one cares, yeah. go out. So, I was like, okay, cool beans. <laughs> cool so, yeah, so it just, so it just, just uh, worked with the mask, and uh, that was it. What, 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 what was, like, your, did you have, like, a special move? Um... Since you weren't really winning matches that much because you're still starting out, so you have to learn how to lose, obviously. Mm -hmm. So not really. Um, there wasn't really much anything I did, but I based off all of my moveset was – because I was smaller, but I was still bigger than most of the guys my size. Mm -hmm. So I was still able to pull off, like, Eddie Guerrero stuff, Chris Benoit stuff, Dean Malenko stuff, very technical. Um, a lot of chain wrestling, a lot of stuff like that. So I was able to do that type of stuff. Um, but I was still able to do like high flying things as well. Oh. So so I was able to like have the ability to do that and not just be stuck with one thing. Um, so that was fun. But yeah, I didn't really have like a finish or anything. If mm -hmm. anything, I did like a like a spinning rock bottom or something like that. And that was about it. Did you ever injure yourself? Uh I bruised my kidney really bad Ooh. on the edge of the apron. So I was, I, was, I was peeing blood for a little bit. Oh that, shit, that shit sucked. <laughs> yeah, that shit sucked. <laughs> yeah, I hurt my kidney a little bit. I was pissed in <laughs> blood for like two months, but no biggie. No biggie. Got right back up. Got right back in the ring. Yeah. So, so uh, how long did yeah, you? Yeah, that, that was about it. How long did you do it? So, yeah, so I was 16, 17, 18, 19. So, like, about four or five years. Yeah, four or five years, and then music started to get a lot bigger and bigger. So I was having to do more shows with music, and so I couldn't really stick with it. And the organizations that I was working with, they were all closing down. Mm. There just there weren't a lot of people, you know, supporting them. They weren't really getting money in, 
Um, so those, all those companies basically just shut down. So now we have basically, um, we still have Shawn Michaels school that's in San Antonio, but that's just a school. Mm. So if you want to get trained, you have to go there. Um, and then they have Booker T's school, which is in Houston. Nice. And so, so you can go to Houston and get trained by him and his people. So those are like the two main ones right now that do stuff. And I know uh, Booker T has his actual company company that does wrestling and training. So you can go there to either watch shows or you can go there and get trained. Wow. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the only two I know of right now. That's, that's pretty fucking dope. Man, yes, it, the, that fucking, the, the Canadian, Canadian crippler, man, that was such a sad fucking outcome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, that was rough. That, I I dug Chris Benoit, man. Like yeah. he was he was dope. He was dope. But Eddie Guerrero too, man. Rey Mysterio is probably one of my favorites, mm-hmm. though. I have to say, Rey Mysterio. You know, if we're talking mainstream wrestler, I never got much into the you know underground stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, but like as a as a wrestler, I mean Eddie, not Eddie Guerrero, but uh, 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 Rey Mysterio right. he was just so. I mean, like he was just he was such a acrobat, man. Like. Yeah, just incredible moves. But if people don't know what happened to Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit was uh, he uh, it was a very tragic thing. He ended up murdering his family. And then I think I think he hung himself in the weight room or something. I don't know. It was was something like that. It was very tragic. Just terrible, terrible outcome. But I think, you know, as people learn more about you know concussions and and the use of uh steroids and shit like i'm sure that combination and and maybe even being mentally unstable in the first place uh you know a combination of all that just get people fucked up uh yeah. you know i just randomly when you were saying vets in schools like homeless vets I, all i could see is like the homeless vets Fuck some homeless dude in in a school fucking (laughs) just like okay everybody's safe you know just like twitching out and tweaking out in the corner uh which is an unfortunate thing were were you a vet did you go off to uh no no i didn't all everyone i went to high school became a marine basically i just was like nah i ain't doing that because i was doing i was doing music at that time too like right when i was high school so i was like i'm just gonna be doing music like i was like one of my main focuses in wrestling so i was like I don't want to be out there. Like I got shit here. Everyone else didn't really have, they were either going to be like working as a mechanic or doing some just like oil field shit mm-hmm. when they graduated. So they were like, fuck this. Like, I'm going to make money. We're going to go kill people. Why not? <laughs> so they all fucking, they all fucking went. They all became Marines. They all came back and it's just like, cool. Like, and I'm, I'm like, I'm happy that they all came back. Yeah. We didn't yeah. lose anyone. That's especially cause I was 2008. So it was, it was still, bullshit out there yeah, like FBS people were still getting killed stuff. people were still you know so yeah they all came back and i i had um i had an uncle that was a marine and then my cousin he's in the army and he's right now in uh kuwait he's in kuwait right now oh, we're um, still over in kuwait mm-hmm. <laughs> still doing so, still so yeah doing like it. i so like the whole military stuff i've always been like a part like a part of it just never in it Mm. Always seeing what's going on and stuff like that. Like my cousin will send me shit that's probably like illegal and he's not supposed to be sending me, but he'll send it to me and be like, "Hey, yo, check this shit out." Like, I'm like, what the fuck? like, I don't know if you're supposed to show me that, dude. But all right, <laughs> well, that's, okay. that, that's the thing, man. Is like people are just people, and on every level, right? Like from 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 the private to the general, and so you see these generals who are. Um, Hey, what's up, Naders? Wait, welcome, Yo, what's in, up, Naders? Nader Tater in the house. What's up, baby boo? Uh, you know, like the, 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 when you when you see uh, you know these these high level high ranking generals and shit, they're still just making stupid ass like human mistakes. You know, mm-hmm. fucking yeah, it, it, it's wild, man. It's wild. People are just people, and, and yeah. we just put this we put people on a pedestal for whatever reason because they you know they listened to orders their whole life like they okay yeah. congratulations you did that um but yeah i don't know man it what what was your uh what what is your have you ever done like uh like cover band work at all or has it always been like art you know like 
your artistic passion. Yeah, it's just pursuit. it's just been bands that made their own music. We never really covered anything. Hmm. So like me doing all the cover music on Twitch, it's just because it's the easiest thing to do. And like I said, being so small and then growing up and listening to all that all those songs. So I got like four hundred and fifty songs on my list that I can just get out there, you know. Dial so, up, baby. Yeah. So um so yeah, so basically just Twitch is just what I'm using that for just to do my cover, like cover songs and everything like that. Um, I know there's a place in town that wants me to do it live. I'm like, hey, come out and play, you know, like that. But I'm like, to be honest, I'm making a little more on Twitch doing that than me having to drive out and put up with people. And I'm like, man, I don't want to deal with all that shit. Like, I don't want to deal with traffic. I can just be at home, chill, have people come and hang out with me and do basically the same shit, you know, so. Still waiting um, for wise, man. Oh yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, I I agree with that in 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 a sense, man. Like, cause I was doing cover bands a lot, and <clears throat> like, yeah. man, I don't want to. I don't. I just don't want to do that shit anymore, man. I don't want to haul out some PA. You have some drunk <clears throat> dickhead who's like, play fucking free bird. You know, yeah, it's the whole yeah. fucking thing. You know, it's like, I'm not much of a drinker, and so. Yeah. Uh, so drunk people tend to, to tend to just annoy me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know. The whole scene um, just makes me just not want to be a part of it ever. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like it's like whenever we play shows and stuff like that. Like with the band that I'm in now, it's like we played in Austin. It's cool. Yeah, getting you know getting back out there and actually playing like good shows and stuff like that. But yeah, it's like dealing with the drunk people is a little annoying. As soon as they come up to me, I can really smell that fucking wet bread on their breath. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, damn, bro. Like, I don't want to like smell all that shit. But they're always, you know, just super excited and stuff like that about everything. So it's just like, all right, you know, whatever. Um, but it is nice not dealing with people. It is nice being able to just play my music on here and just have people be super chill. Naders comes in every once in a while, you know, does his little thing. He's like, make it, make yeah, wise men your own, bro. Just <laughs> do it. Just do it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, but yeah, so it's fun. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like, I, I just turned down a tour and we're actually supposed to play. It was a Texas tour actually. And, uh, mm. we're playing a reggae festival near San Antonio but I just turned it down because I'm I'm just like oh man give your balls a tug you better calm down naders um, <laughs> it was uh, to me I just don't feel like going out there and, and doing that like th- there is a part of me that's like oh yeah let's go on this adventure but man I'm about to be 40 years old I don't give a fuck uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at home I got a family. I don't, I just don't care anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't yeah. care to pursue that. And it's an yeah. originals thing, too, you know? And I love my reggae band, but it's just like, I don't know, man. It, for me, I, I've just grown past that point of, you know, f- travel and rustling yeah. through people and dealing with fucking shit. Like, I just, and like, I don't like that you can't. I, I don't like you can't fly with weed. It's like get the fuck out of my face. I don't want. I mean, I don't even smoke weed right now, but like it still it bothers me. Especially Texas. It's like come on, Texas. It's mm. like as cool as Texas is. It's still you guys still got that weed fucking shit, man. Like why? Why? Mm-hmm. I mean, whatever. It's not even the biggest thing of all, but I just I don't I don't like parameters like that. It's like yeah. we're, we're traveling through Arizona and. Fucking, they were like, right, guys, we gotta, we gotta get rid of the weed. I'm so, I'm not getting rid of my weed. I'm not hiding my weed. Fuck these guys. Are they not caught up with what's going on out there? And, and they like, they like hid their weed in, in like, a, 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 they, they opened a chip bag, put the weed in it, and then resealed it uh, with a lighter. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. I just kept it in my book bag. Just, and, and even though I knew that it could have fucked us over, because when you get pulled. When you're getting through checkpoints and stuff, that's federal, and so yeah. it's not state stuff. So it's, it just annoys me. So that fact alone, just I don't care for it. I don't care for being searched. I don't care for being prodded. I'm a fucking American, goddammit, it, and I don't like mm-hmm. that shit. 
you are you uh are you someone who's uh been pretty sober your whole life i mean are, are you... yeah 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 I've, I've been uh straight edge my whole life that's basically. Tight. that's that's what the x is for on my hat oh really i thought yeah. it was for malcolm x that's what a lot of people always think so they don't tell me shit <laughs> they just whatever you know do what you do but yeah no it's just it's just for straight edge yeah so i've always been around it i said my two cousins i've been locked up they weren't shipping weed though. They were shipping like heroin or some shit. Like oh, that. let's go! They, uh, they, uh, they got caught up big time. So, uh, uh, so yeah, they they always did that shit. Um, <laughs> but like going through El Paso and stuff like that. Yeah, whenever we played shows, we would go to those checkpoints. So when you go from San Antonio or something, then you get to El Paso. They have a federal checkpoint because mm. obviously that's the closest thing to Mexico. Like right. you can look to your left and you see the rocks and shit. That's like Mexico right yeah, there. Baby. And so, and so it's just like, eh, like go through there. And, um, I remember I had creatine. I was like, fuck, they're going to think that shit's cocaine or some shit <laughs> because, because it's just micro, it's micro fucking, um, micronized creatine. It wasn't normal creatine because normal creatine is like flour. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, fucking my micronized one it's not it's like a finer like finer sh- type shit like sugar or something yeah yeah it's like a finer finer type shit. i was like man they're gonna i don't know what the fuck they're gonna look through my shit because i don't know if it's a different type of smell since whatever the fuck but uh yeah the i remember seeing the dog look at my bag and like i was like don't you fucking sit down <laughs> don't fucking sit down don't you and do it, it just so looked, and then it, it just kept it just kept going i was like because oh. it like stood there for a second and i was like man but then it just kept on going. I was like, "All right." Cool. What? What? What made you? What made you want to stay? Stay straight edge and and not participate in that kind of activity. Um. So, pretty simple. I didn't really get to know any of my uncles or my grandpas because okay. they drank themselves to death. They all oh. died due to like liver shit. Always <laughs> fucked up. Always had some type of shit. So they always just they just drank themselves to death. Yeah. So I I never never got to uh, hang out with them. Never really got to know them. Plus, my parents didn't want me to be around that stuff. So when it came to like birthdays, when it came to like anything like that, we would be there just for a little bit. But once the beer came out, once everything started coming out, they're just like, "All right, go on home." And so it's just like, "Well, all right, see y'all later." Um. So it was that. So basically that. And then um, I remember uh. One of my older cousins, they had a best friend, and they were drinking and driving. And, of course, they fucking got in a wreck. And his, uh, he basically, his best friend died in his arms. So it was just like, oh, fuck. God. Like, if y'all, that shit wasn't fucking happening. We're drinking, fucking idiots. Yeah. So it was like, it's like seeing, like, no family, no family get together. Seeing my f- cousin go through that. Seeing, like, and where I work, um, I'm on the opposite side of town. There's a reason for that because on that side of town is the worst part of town. And my parents live in that side of town. So I grew up in that side of town. Mm. So it's basically just people just doing drug deals right there outside. No big deal. No one cares. Um, fucking needles on the ground everywhere. Like no one gives a shit. It's all that type of stuff. So I always saw what it did to people. And I'm like, no one gets out. It, like I come to the opposite side of town and I'm like, this is super nice. And it's, <laughs> and, but well, it's funny is none of those people in my neighborhood will ever see this side of town. They'll never see that side of town right. because they just won't. They can't. You don't got a car. You fucking got your D, DUIs. You can't fucking get a car. You're not going to drive. You don't have money to drive be, or get a car because you spend your money on fucking drugs. So then it's like, well, you, you're stopping yourself, stopping yourself, stopping yourself. So I saw all of that. And I'm just like, well, I don't. why do I want to do that? Like, uh, like, all, like all my friends, everyone who I'm around. They'll like you know drink occasionally or they'll they'll smoke weed and stuff like that and I'm like, it's not affecting me, it's not bothering me. But once I start seeing them slipping, then I'm like, hey yo, cut your shit, like mm-hmm. you know, because I care. I'm not just gonna let my friend do something and fuck themselves up. So, um, so they're happy when I'm around because they're like, hey, you know, we'll you can be drive. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can drive or we'll be okay. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's gonna be fine. So, um. But yeah, that's that's main one of the main reasons why I was like I decided like hey and plus when I was growing up in the hardcore scene that we had straight edge was one of the things mm. and I was like, oh okay we have heavy music everything is super cool and people don't drink and smoke they're totally against it so I'm like oh, okay cool like I found 
my group of people right here. So it was more like the hardcore scene, then it went into the metal scene, then but being straight edge is always something like that. Um, always, that's basically why, like mainly because I saw that, but then I found out, oh, there's a music scene that has it. So, okay, it's a, it works for me because now I can play my music and I don't really have to necessarily be around all like the drunks and all that stuff. We can actually play a venue where there's no alcohol served. There's no nothing, you know, like whatever. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, man, like that that's dope. That I, I respect the shit out of that because especially with music, it it kinda it's almost like synonymous, right? Like musicians mm -hmm. and drinking and, and and you know, chasing, trying to get ass, doing all that stuff, which you know, I mean, I, I don't got a problem with anybody drinking or trying to get ass. I, yeah. it's just uh it, it's sort of synonymous with all that it shit. goes hand in hand it goes hand yeah in hand. you want to rock and roll baby you guys you got a party all night you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah so <laughs> it, it goes together man well and that's and that's what you know that's what got me was like trying to i'd rather stumble over a straw yeah oh yeah because <laughs> the california outlawed plastic drinking straws but hand out plastic syringes you know what? Cali is backwards in some things. You know, I miss Cali so much. I love fucking California. I live in San Diego, so I was fucking like 15 minutes away from the border. Um, and and seeing, like, it, it's so wild to just go down, go over the border and see the, like, object poverty. And then you go, you know, back over the border. And it's like some of the richest people in the world and some of the most beautiful property in the world. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's such a wild scene, but yeah, being, being a musician and like, I really thought that that's what it was all about is just, uh, it, going and, and, uh, you know, getting fucked up and playing and shit. And my heroes were always like wasted, you know, like Jimi Hendrix was frying on acid and playing the star spangled banner. Meanwhile, he died a horrible, lonely death, you know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, at a very young age. And yeah. uh, he, I, I just sort of let that shit go to my head, too. And, 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 and like, it, it was really interesting to see my music career before and after drinking and drugging is like it, it like completely changed. Like before I quit drinking, I was just fucking up people's sets, you know, like <laughs> I wasn't I was just making mistakes and fucking shit up. But as mm -hmm. soon as I was able to stop drinking and get a hold over my life. I was able to like work as a musician and actually make money and actually go on tours and do stuff. Now yeah. I was also the DD. I was also the, the, you know, I was driving motherfuckers. So I'd have a whole van full of fucking smelly dude drunk and smoking weed. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to get to the fucking crash pad. Shut the fuck up and white knuckling it the whole way. But, yeah. but it is like, there, there is something beautiful about sobriety where you're, where, where you get to enjoy life and, yeah. um, and like remember stuff. Like I've had so many awesome memories that I can't remember, you know, like it's, yeah. I've seen so many great bands that I, I don't even remember what happened. I don't even remember what songs they played and, and it's, yeah. it's kind of stupid, you know, like I don't, I don't care for it. I, I don't care for it at all. Uh, but, but I, I, I did go sober for a few years and then um it just recently I started drinking once in a while again so but mm -hmm. it's it's nothing that like it was it's like yeah. uh, once in a great while have some drinks enjoy some booze have some fun with some friends uh but but it has to be moderation man it just has to be moderation and yeah. and, and the people who stay sober for their whole life I just respect that shit but that shit is not for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so like like the the cousin that's in the army that's in kuwait mm. um he basically like joined the army at i think the last age that you could wow. because he was a bad alcoholic mm. real bad and so basically what he did was he wanted to get clean but he was like i i just gotta go run so he would literally be at the gym all fucking day he's like if i had the urge to drink i can run if I have the urge to drink, I can run. So he just basically just kept running and running and running. He would do cardio all fucking day, like all day. Because I would go to the gym in the morning. I'd see he's there. I'm like, all right, you're here. And he would like text me throughout the day. Because I was basically, I guess, like sort of his like person to lean on when he's feeling any type of way. So then, you know, I'd go when I get off of work and he's still there. He's like, I can't leave. He's like, I can't leave the gym because if I leave the gym, I'm going to drink. 
Mm-hmm. So it was that it was that bad. Wow. And then when once once the and the gym was twenty four seven, thankfully. Mm-hmm. So he can shower, he can fucking eat, he can have they had like a shake bar or whatever there, so he can have a shake, so he can just chill. And so he just did that and then he was like, I'm gonna have to go to the army. He's like, I'm gonna have to go somewhere where I'm on a schedule and I can't do this shit. Like, cause it was fucking bad. And so um yeah, and he, he's been in that now for the past five years now. And so he's been doing he's been doing really well, like really really good. He's still sober. Yeah, he's still sober. Yeah, that, he's still that's sober. interesting. The army was his choice. Like I, I, my friends that went to the army, that's all they did was drink and fucking, mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking yeah. wild out. Is it? Is that the worst? The drinking with like dudes all the time. Like this is all we do is drink together. It's, ugh, like yeah, yeah. It was weird that he chose that, but he but it he worked went for up him. in the ranks. Yeah, and he went up in the ranks real fast because he wasn't doing like anything. He was just strictly just doing everything. He was told doing everything he needed to do getting everything done he wasn't going out he wasn't doing anything so he like got up in the rings pretty fast so now he has like he's the top and he's watching all these he's a sergeant so now he's watching all these people yeah. like all the young kids coming in and stuff like that and he's like man i got put up all these idiots every day and <laughs> ding dongs like- <laughs> <laughs> dude i so, mean it, it's it's funny once you start aging and you start seeing how young people are like, was I that bad? And and like when I look at young people now, it's like I was worse. I was yeah. worse than all these kids. I was just so out of control. I, I really I th- thought I was. Yeah, awesome. I think kids now don't take as many risks as I think everyone used to. And obviously, people don't go out as much anymore. Everyone's glued to their phone. Everyone, they don't touch grass. They're just straight up at home. Yeah. all the time i was like i store was right thankfully i was right at that point where we still rode our bikes everywhere we didn't i my parents we didn't have a computer i didn't have a fucking computer i didn't have a cell phone i didn't have anything until like after i graduated i don't even think i had a car until after i graduated That's tight. yeah so i was just like i was still at that point where hey use a landline phone call your friend <laughs> hey yo you home like what the fuck like like i was still at that point and i'm thankful for that because i know how that was and like how people are now i'm just like bro like it's just so weird it's so weird now like but i don't see people taking the same risk people are still doing the same amount of drugs basically i mean people are still fucking being fucked up but now with like all that fentanyl shit too like people are dropping like flies fentanyl man that fentanyl is no joke just coming you know, and when you look at, uh, you know, your governor, what's his name? Abbott? Is that his name? Mm, governor Abbott? Yeah. Th- that shit to me was so fucking funny when mm. he was shipping fucking the immigrants up to New York and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> and like, I think you're still doing it. I think uh, I think it's still happening because like... Yeah, we don't want that shit here, man. Well, we don't want that but, shit but, here. But, but that's the thing that people don't understand. And it's like, I'm guessing you come from immigrants. Like, your family came over here at some point. My family yeah, came my, Yeah, my grandma and them were all Spain. Mm, okay. Spanish. Or still higher class. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh yeah well it's it, it's funny right it's funny yeah. how it, it is funny how there is like this caste system or hierarchy in in yeah. mexico still where yeah. the lighter skin and the spaniard blood is, is purer and then, then the chilangos yeah. are some yeah, kind cause, of because my grandma is straight blonde hair green eyes yeah yeah those fucking so. blonde haired mexicans oh <laughs> it's so funny yeah we are all immigrants but the, but the problem is with what's happening now which which you know i i come from mexicans and and like my mom and 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 her family came up here they came uh they worked the fields and shit they did the whole thing and but my mom got naturalized as an american she did the whole she did she went through the process and it, it, when you think about how people are just sort of marching over with fentanyl, which yeah. is which is killing, you know, musicians we love, fucking family members, mm-hmm. friends, uh, it, it it is it is a odd situation because like on one hand I don't I I, I'm, I I do think people should be able to come to this country and try and you know have a better life because I know. I've seen what Mexico is and like mm-hmm. my family, I still have ties of Mexico and my mom still goes down there. And, uh, you know, I lived fucking right across the border seeing, uh, 
you know, seeing little kids fucking selling gum just so their family can eat and shit to to mm -hmm. the tourists and. It, it, it's very sad. I've seen, sh you know, shacks that were built out of fucking, you know, just garbage that they find on. The so I know what it is down there. That's horrible. And mm -hmm. so I do want people coming here and, and finding a better way. And and for all the anti-American sentiment that seems to be trendy these days, it's like people still want to fucking come here. People yeah. still risk everything to come here. But also yeah. along with that, you're going to have people who are fucking bringing over drugs. They're fucking mm -hmm. human trafficking. Yep. It's not just fucking people who are trying to start their lives over, and there has they're to just be trying to make money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fucked up. It's... And you have you have a lot of fucked up people that are trying to cross over, and that's what makes it sad. Is because we want people, we mm -hmm. want people to have a good life. We right. want people to. There's plenty of people that want to come and work. There's plenty of people that are willing to put in that work. But you also have all the fuck ups who want to come, make that money because they think, well, it's the easy way to make money if I go ahead and you know do this whole trafficking, do do some drug trafficking as well, and all this shit. And it's just like. You have to vet people. You have yeah. to. It, and it sucks, but that's what it is because of all the bad shit that comes with it. Right, right. And, and to to sit there and be like, oh, we'll fucking let them all come and blah, 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 blah. It's like... I, I, I can't just fucking walk up into Canada. No, not at all. I, I, no, I can't fucking walk up into Canada. I can't do that shit. Hell so why no. the fuck are you going to let them come up in here? This is like, the end of opportunity, bro. I thought this was land free. It's like, yeah, it is, but there is a system and a process that's involved, and and I don't think that it's wrong to fucking want people who come into this country to fucking be vetted a little bit. I mean, shit, just yeah. a little bit, just a little yeah. fucking bit. You got fentanyl that you're trying to bring into our country that's coming from China, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> just with the Hadouken. Thank you, Nanders. Here, I I turned off the. There you go. We got some Hadoukens going. Uh, but, but yeah, man, that shit with Abbott fucking sending all those fucking immigrants. And, and I believe that they had to, like, it was so out of control that they had to put them up in a hotel. And then mm -hmm. they wanted to move them to camps, like, like FEMA style camps <laughs> into mm -hmm. like these big tents. And then they were they were pissed off because they wanted to live in the hotel and they were protesting. I was like, I'm even from here, but now y'all protesting because y'all got kicked out of the hotel. Like, what the fuck? Oh, dude. Oh. I, you know, and these are people, and I don't want to sound callous, and and I I do care about people, but it's like as soon as as soon as you start letting that shit sort of happen, I, I feel like it, it's not. I don't know, man. I feel like it's not a good look, and it's not gonna stop. And it's it, it's it's this entitlement that people people get. always expect more. Yeah, they want more. Always They're, expect more. I'd cook hot dogs for a vegan boycott. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Dangers. Uh, but yeah, it, it, and again, like I, I come from immigrants, and and as we all do here in America, but it, it's. Mm -hmm. it, at this point it's what are we uh what are we trying to accomplish you know what are we trying to do here are we are we really just trying to let fucking sex traffickers and fucking you know drug dealers just waltz on in here i mean apparently yes i, I think it's funny now that uh that i think that this current administration is starting to sort of say they're gonna start locking down and it's funny all the things that the last administration was getting judged for. It, uh, this administration is starting to catch on. Like, oh shit, we, I guess we do got to do stuff. Uh, there's this uh, Willow Project. Have you heard the Willow Project? It's mm. it's this thing where they're gonna start drilling in, in Alaska on on protected land. I believe that's what they're doing uh, because of this whole situation that's happening where. Um, Probably Saudi Arabia is going to start trading oil in ye in yuan. I think that's how they mm. say it. And uh, our petrodollar is ab about to take a shit. I'm guessing. I'm only guessing here. But it seems as if things are going. So they started drilling in Alaska mm. uh, on protected land. And it's called the Willow Project. And, and you know, it's some part of me is saying, you know, like, uh, it's protected land. I get it. But we're so... You know, during the pandemic, it was it, it became very evident how dependent we are on other people, other countries to to just function 
as a as a country. So to me, it no. was to me, it seems like a good idea to start trying to figure out our own energy <laughs> sources because I, I, it looks like uh, America's been the and for for as much as I love America, I, I also you know criticize America a lot because we have been like the world police. We have been those people. We have been that country that goes and over to- and topples governments and. You know, puts it for democracy or oil. Um, so I do get it. We kind of have some shit coming to us, some 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 karmas coming our way, and so I, I do think that we should start seeking other sources of, of of energy, other than trying to like you know steal it from other countries or doing our thing. I I don't know, man. I I just yeah. went in there. By the way, alcohol is illegal in Kuwait. So I think your boys doing uh, probably doing okay with that sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So that, that that's a good thing. Um anyways, uh, we have a would you rather that was requested 41 minutes ago. So give me one second. We're going to do some would you rathers. So give All me right. give me one second. Damn it! Raina, where's those? What? Where is it? You need to chill out. Who is? I had to move them because you put something in the space of them. We're not talking about that. Thank you. Hello, JXO. Hello. All right, here we go. We got some would you rather. We haven't done this in a while. It's a, bit, it's a little dusty. Here, you should do these. These are fun. But these ones are, are perverted. Well, those are, no, no, you can do those. This is different. This is fun. Okay. Just because um, I haven't <laughs> done them on stream yet. Oh. Since you haven't done them, I have to do them. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got me off the couch. I've been working hard out there. What are you working on? All of the files for SPCC. Oh, shit. What? Nothing. I was just saying, oh, shit. Somebody's got to work hard in this house. <sighs> oh, Lord. Cathasaurus says hi. Hi, cat. Hello, chat. Ah. Okay. You didn't see the back, did you? I don't know. Hints, toe, cramps, starry. What What does that mean? What did I say? Is that the period? Hints, toe, cramps, starry. Menstruation. No. Chat, you can guess too. What is that? Oh, hi. You know what? My audiobook wrapped. I just have to go back and do um, pickups sometime next week, but I'm, I'll be back to streaming. You got... Yeah! Yes. We're going to have so much fun. Come and find me in the kids' tent. Oh, my gosh. Kathosaurus going to Willie Town. Liz Vega. Oh glow goodness. Stick. Raina Mystique. Come a- on. Acoustic Hookah. Sump. <laughs> Sump. Hints, toe, crams, starry. Menstruation. No, I said Instagram story. Oh, okay. I get it now. Okay, well, that's... I'm not doing Here, that. Here, one more. All right. Well, now Rain is taking over. Him impeachment. All right, hold on. Him impeachment. Impeachment. Yeah, good job. Thank you. See, these are fun. You're into it. Zig- <laughs> Ziggy pops out for the game. Hi, Ziggs. <laughs> Can eb hiss. Cannabis. It was too easy. I'm just picking them at random. The randos. I, I feel like the blue ones might be naughty. Ooh, let's get so naughty. So I'm going to go to yellow. Let's get yellow. Do you speak Spanish? Moving Dutch, man. Uh, uh, just a little bit. Okay. Brr, had, leak, hoop, her. Brr, had, leak, hoop, her. I know it, but I'm going to let you guys do it. You guys see it? Oh, he has it backwards. Oh, God. Oh. Brr, had, leak, hoop, her. No guesses, Jay? Nah, I'm 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 dumb. I don't know this shit. 
Bradley Cooper. It is Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> See, I would have said helicopter. See, you can helicopter. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Movie Dutchman, for gift subbing Ziggy. I appreciate you, my you friend. Go. It's fun. Play it. Okay, well, I'm going to do a couple would you okay, rathers well, these first. These are here for you. Don't knock them off, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, mother. Okay, bye, chat. I'll see you in chat, kind of, because I'm working. Moving Dutchman. Thank you, Moving Dutchman. Um, okay, so we got some would you rathers. These are uh, would you rather the filthy edition. Ooh. Okay, so, Jaxo, would you rather cry uncontrollably like a baby at weddings or yell uncontrollably at the screen during movies. Cry. Cry. Aw. Sensitive musician, everybody. See? <laughs> Just because you work out doesn't mean that, you, that you're some I, kind of... I, I, I like movies, so I wouldn't like to ruin that for people. Yeah. Dude, fuck it. <laughs> you, but you know what the best is? When you're at the movie theater and there's like a black dude who talks shit in the crowd. Like, that's my favorite. Is like black dudes in the crowd is like, no, don't do that. And it's like, or is it like dumb bit or something, you know, whatever it is. That is the best. That's the best part about movies to be is like when you got somebody right at the quiet part, it's just like, Bleh! and then the whole theater laughs and shit. That, that's the best. That's that's the best. Yeah. Um, all right. Would you rather relive your life as Marilyn Monroe or as an Olsen twin? Olsen twin. Why? Because I have a twin. <laughs> you want a twin? <laughs> is that like your childhood <laughs> want? How, by the way, this is not filthy at all. This filthy edition is lying. It's lying. Excuse me? Yeah, <laughs> Samo, you know it's true. You know Damn, it's true. Samo. You know it's true. <laughs> what, what a black dude or a black person in the crowd is just like talking shit during the movie. That shit is hilarious. Now, there is a difference between someone talking shit during the movie and talking during the movie, right? Yep, like that's a big difference. Yep. Big difference. Big fucking difference. I am that guy that says random stuff when it's quiet. No one take no one takes that job. <laughs> exactly, Samo. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's why you and me can be homies, because you're not afraid to say that shit. You're not afraid to, to yell out during a, a movie. I am. <laughs> but I'm also I'm also not black, so you know I I think it's reserved for black guys that are funny. That, that's my 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 personal opinion. Uh, hot take. My hot take is that. <laughs> um, let me see here. Um, okay, would you rather yawn? What is this? Oh, yawn disinterested, disinterestedly. God damn it, I'm fucking dumb. Yawn disinterestedly whenever someone answers a question you asked or hiccup every time you call a person on your cell phone. These are dumb. Um, hiccup. I don't, I don't call people on my cell phone that much. Yeah. So are you a are are you, are you a texter? Do you text? Just, just, just text me, homie. Like I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i feel that i feel that my my wife is like you should call them it's like i'll text them maybe I don't like know. what what started that though honestly is i was like once i had the opportunity to text it was great because every time i made a phone call to like say say there's a chick i was dating right and i'll call her and all of a sudden motherfuckers having a whole conversation in the background with someone else i'm like you know what i'm just sitting here man yeah i've been sitting here for 30 minutes i haven't said shit they're just going back and forth i'm just like bro like i always had to deal with that all the time so i was like once texting came i was like i don't have to i don't ever have to deal with that ever again just text me your feelings let me know what you what you're doing <laughs> and that's it like I'm, I'm done with that I can feel that though, like because I would rather, especially if it comes to girls or ladies, uh, I would rather, I'd rather be like, let's just like hang out and we can talk then, because trying to talk to you while you're hanging out with the homie is like kind of lame, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, it was, it was much. I, I just never like. I, I don't really care for phone conversations. Yeah. Generally. If it's something that's gonna be like super quick or like mm -hmm. something important. I'm all for that, but when it's like you call me, because you you call me, 
And then you want to talk to me, I'm thinking. And then all of a sudden you start having a whole conversation nah, with someone else that ain't me. I got dumped via text. Oh, Ziggy. Oh, hell no. Nah. That, that. That's not good. Oh, Zig, sorry about that. Why are you gay? <laughs> That's what I would respond to. <laughs> Why are you gay? <laughs> That's so funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, uh, the if you send me a text that's the size of a paragraph that I'm calling you back. Well, th see now there's the other thing. That's the other thing though. Like if you have um if it's like a long conversation that you that you're texting back and forth and you know you could just get it done in just a moment like you just call and be like, "Hey, blah 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 blah." I I I I I can respect that, but other than that, other than that, I don't care for long phone calls or, you know, once in a while, you know, if it's an old school friend or something, I'll, I'll chat them up or a family member or something. But I'm not here for phone calls like, you know, like I like hanging out with, with people, real life people. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's do that. But uh, are you dating? Are you currently dating? Mm. No, are you, are you are you not into dating at all right now, or what? What what's the? I don't know. It, it's weird for people trying to date right now, man. Is Society's it? got everyone fucked up. Really, what you've had some yeah. bad experiences then? Yeah, they they expect too much, but when you expect a little, they get pissed off. Hmm. Or or. The, the the big famous one, you're not tall enough. Oh. The big famous one, you're not tall enough. They say that to you? Yeah. Well, how, I'm, a, I'm Mexican, bro. I'm only 5'7", man. Shit. But do five sevens, re, that five is seven. a respectable size. 5'7", five, five, 180, baby. That's it. <sighs> that's meaty, that's baby. It, that, that, that's it. That's thicky right there, son. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen I, I'm fucking, I'm 6'1". And, and like I'm like the hero at the grocery stores for little old ladies. There you go. But I'm also but I'm also like a lumbering, lingering presence. So like children fear me, you know, like people are like, Oh my god, you're terrified. Uh, mm. but when they say hi, you gotta say wait. Equal exchange program, my friend, stay salty. Oh, okay. There we go. Same <laughs> those posing. Just say mm -hmm. I'm taller when I lay down. There you go. There you go, <laughs> Jay. Big facts. Big facts. <laughs> Big facts. So, so what? Uh, what was the last? Were you doing the the Tinders? Have you been doing? Did you do any of the online dating stuff? Uh, I tried it for a little bit, but that's when you'd get basically the whole. The first question was, "Hey, how tall are you?" No, -uh. literally the first question every fucking time they would say a compliment and be like oh i see you're a musician and then i'd be like yeah and they're like hey funny question how tall are you i'm like oh, fuck. like this? every time every time and when i say that when i say that i'd be like instantly unmatched so i'm just like you know what i ain't gonna fuck with it it, it is what it is but, but five seven is not that fucking bad man that's like it is what it is man it's all it, but then again you're dealing with people like in the austin area so they're mm -hmm. all in that mindset right now of yeah. like hey make six figures or make yeah. seven figures be tall I'm like bro like okay you know how hard it is to make six figures yeah you know how hard it is to make any of that well like, yeah no it's that whole like you know one percent of the population makes that and the rest of everybody is like you know personal trainers or chefs or whatever you know what i mean it's like you're talking about a very small minuscule uh, you know and the, <laughs> I'm all about women's lib. I'm all about women doing what they want, but like they're yeah. But but it's fine to have a preference, but like once you point out your preference, then you're an asshole. Right. It it, it, it that's the thing, right? Like it should be able to talk. I, you know, like hey, uh, you know, you want to know how tall I am? Okay, here. How about how many guys you been with? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We can play, yeah, it's like we can play that game. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah, how thick is your ass, girl? <laughs> like ass picks now. Oh mm -hmm. shit. But but you know, like 
I know people hate Top G. I know they do, and and I don't agree with them. All. Uh, Andrew Tate, and by the way, Andrew Tate was just released from jail. Yeah, and, I saw that. I saw that. So, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, and there's a lot that I don't agree with with Andrew Tate, yeah. but, but there's yeah. but there's but there is a point to you know like some of the stuff like him, Kevin Samuels. You know what I mean? Like Kevin Samuels was a G dude, like R.I.P. Mm-hmm. You know when you're talking about dating, you have women who have like kids with four different dudes, and like fuck it, you know they're 35 and they're like, I need a man that's fucking that makes six figures. You know who's gonna treat me right? It's like, bro. And it's like you're a three. <laughs> you're a three with three baby babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, where's your baby daddy's at? Like, <laughs> but but like, it, but but exactly. And it's like <clears throat> there's this weird thing about the entitlement of women, especially in this country, that that they that they feel like they are entitled to the the, the cream of the crop. But yet, what are they bringing to the table? Um, you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you're, wait, okay, so you're uneducated, like, you fucking, you've been with, like, 20 do, you know, you're blown out, like, you know, and, and, and again, if what is a woman? <laughs> Naders, how dare you ask that? How dare you? And, and, and again, and again, I, I'm out of the dating field, so, like, this, I have no, I, I have n- nothing to gain or lose here. I don't care. Like, I'm fucking <clears throat> married. I have a son. I'm good to go. Like I don't care, and uh, and of course I I believe a woman should be able to sleep with as many men as she wants to, or women, or whatever. I, I think people should do whatever they want, but you should also know that some people still, you know, there's going to be expectations coming from you too, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it it is a two way street, and equality yeah. does it, it should go both ways. Mm. So so I don't know, man. So so you haven't really been finding luck out there, huh? Nah, man. I ain't even messing with all that. I ain't messing with all that. Yeah. Basically, just focus. Just focus on everything right now. Like, um, just building up everything that I guess you know. Just working hard, doing everything that I need to do to make sure my life's good. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. and and once I and the way that I always lived my life was like if I could provide for myself and I know I make enough to provide for someone else then then I can you know look for something like that yeah for sure because it's like there's so there's a lot of dudes that don't do that they don't even provide for themselves but yet they want to have someone and then it turns into a whole shit yeah. show so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and by the way, like man whoring too, whatever. Like that that's mm. fucking that's that's weird too, but it, yeah. it, so I I uh, you know, it, it should go both ways. Expectations should go both ways. I'm not saying that fucking women should just be fucking cum dumpsters to men and that's that's it. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I, but but there there should be some sort of expectations, there should be some sort of standards, but but things are so fucked up right now with all that and and, and I do feel bad for people who are single and, and chronically single that are like aren't and, and I'm not saying I feel bad for you because obviously if if you really wanted to go out and find somebody to be with you would you know you would concentrate and focus on that I can tell that you're someone who's focus focus oriented it's like you mm-hmm. know yeah it's so like if, if that's what you were looking for that's what you're looking for and not saying you can't attain that but what I'm saying is people who feel like they're chronically single and don't have a chance or so you know, it, it, the, it, there is um, there is something to be said about that. What was the statistic? That, and this goes a lot for women, because right now we're not really young people aren't really focused on 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 like you know being married and and having children right now. And what was it? Oh my God! What was the stat? It was like. Most I know people, it's I know it's way less now, and I know there's a lot of people having less sex now too. Really, I like, thought people were yeah, fucking all the time. I, I think it's like less sex now, and people are like focused like more on um, I guess like like honestly like people are really focused on social media and like trying to like make themselves a brand and trying to yeah. be everything that they see because everyone is a in a constant um everyone's in a constant state of comparing each other. Yeah. And comparing, comparing, you you go through reels or you go through TikTok and you're like, this person's doing this thing. They're living the life. And it's like everyone's seeing that video. Everyone's constantly comparing themselves to either that person or just to their whatever they're, they're seeing. 
And so it's like, I feel like everyone's just living in a constant state of comparison. Yeah. Which, which isn't good. And it's making people sad. It's making people like feel bad about themselves. I think the issue is that there are too many entitled people out here, out there on both sides of the relationship. People should bring something equal to the table. Yeah, I can feel that. I can feel that. Yeah. I mean, you know, if if two if two fucking prostitutes want to get together and fucking make a go at it, let us go. You know, if two like I agree, make it happen. And I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, that was kind of a bad example, but I I agree with that. It's like bring. And here's the thing. Here's the funny thing is that when I first met my wife, I was I was a dusty turd. I didn't have a job. I was a shitty musician, alcoholic, drug addict. So, like, you know, sometimes you do find good people within that. But it, it's it, it is a it's a it's a weird situation right now. I don't know. It's kind of like high school people always outdoing each other. Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah. that. Top ramen noodles and temperature room bologna nights. <laughs> Temperature room bologna night, Samo. That's that's the name of Samo's next album. Temperature room bologna nights. Um, you know what? TikTok, whatever. TikTok, TikTok should probably be be uh, canceled. By the way, but but it, have you heard about this TikTok ban? Mm-hmm. And then they decided to fucking not just have one thing. It's it's not all about TikTok. Right. Obviously, it's about money. And obviously, they put other bullshit in there, too. It's like the Patriot Act 2.0. Exactly. Let's, let's go ahead and go attack VPNs. Let's go and attack all this other stuff. And it's like yeah. more surveillance, more surveillance on everything. And and I didn't realize that at the time, like, because we did a whole episode on that. And and I, I know I stated, like, uh, there was um, – there is a uh, – um, that you know, if they're gonna ban TikTok, what else are they gonna do, right? Like, if we're giving them the right to ban TikTok, then then they're gonna want to ban other things, and it, it does seem like that's what happened here. Is that there is a uh, there's more to the story than just um than just banning TikTok. It's it's uh it, it it's something more nefarious. It, it's actually really fucked up. And hold on, I actually, with that in mind, I actually saved some some stuff on it that was really interesting. So hold on, give me a second here. Is this right? Nope. God damn it. God damn it. There it is. All right. Here, How we check. use the internet is let's about check to this fundamentally out. change forever, and it's You terrible. can't hear that, can you? This is Bill... Let me share this with you. I fucking hate Google Meet sometimes. Nope. So this is what really they're talking about. This is the Restrict Act. And it's not just TikTok. Uh, So. Let's check it out. Okay. Now it's not going to play. Awesome. All right, bitch. How we use the internet is about to fundamentally change forever, and it's terrifying. This is Bill S. God damn it. 686, also known as the Restrict Bill. You'll probably know it as the TikTok ban bill, but it does so much more than just that. It actually does more than any bill I think we've ever seen. I encourage everyone to read it by going here and clicking the text tab, but here are the main takeaways. Foreign adversaries can change by definition, but a few are already listed. They are the People's Republic of China, including Hong Kong, Special Administration Region, the Republic of Cuba, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and of course, the Russian Federation and Venezuela under the regime of Nicolas Maduro Moros. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Uh, but these definitions can change at any time. The bill covers hardware technology like modems, routers, and home cameras, and virtual tech like VPNs, and basically bans them if they are manufactured by or used to contact and deal with foreign adversaries. Speaking of VPNs, using VPNs to bypass banned apps such as TikTok is made a criminal act under this bill, and the penalty? It's a minimum imprisonment of 20 years and a minimum fine of $250,000 or $1 million, depending if you knowingly did so to access banned content.
The bill gives the federal government the power to monitor any activity used by these suspected devices, virtual or otherwise. Essentially, they can monitor what you are doing at home 24-7 without even informing you. This includes things such as routers, video games, streaming apps, smart thermostats, ring cameras, basically anything that uses the internet. Now, the real terrifying part of all of this, as if that all wasn't terrifying enough, is that the bill goes on to state that this will happen by the president appointing a secretary of communication. That secretary then forms a group on their own without any voter input whatsoever. This group can have meetings behind closed doors. They don't have to disclose anything. They can ban and deem anything inappropriate or a risk to security at any moment in time. And if they do, they can go through your instant messages, your emails, texts, basically anything that uses the internet, and they can censor it. So in summary, this bill can effectively ban anything the government deems inappropriate extremely quickly without warning. The ramifications of this range from breaking up mass communication methods to even watching the cameras in your home, aka spying on you. It really is that bad, and I am not speaking in hyperbole. Please contact your reps. I have a video on my TikTok ban playlist. I actually did contact my representative. <laughs> I was a, That is fucking terrifying. That is terrifying. And, and the fact that we're sitting here, um, you know, concerned, concerned about TikTok. It's like, okay, TikTok, I get it. TikTok is controlled by a Chinese gov by the Chinese government and or a corporation and it's well known that there's no privacy laws for cor corporations in China. So if they want that information, the government is going to take that fucking information. So TikTok, I get it. Yeah, maybe it should be banned. But they're also trying to be sly little assholes. And slide in this other thing where now they can just sort of ban whatever they deem as, you know, adversarial or, or oh, oh, that, that's, a, that's a risk to, you know, our democracy. So, or, or that's misinformation or whatever it is. And it's not anybody who's been elected, right, who's making these decisions. It's not anybody that the people had a choice in the matter. It's this small group of people who get to decide what is okay and what isn't okay on the internet. And that means, you know, if Reddit has something that they don't like, oh, oh well, fuck, fuck you, Reddit, you're out. You know, yeah. if, 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 and if they suspect you are using a VPN to use TikTok after they ban it, oh, well, we're just going to go on their servers. We're going to go through their ring cameras. We're going to go, you know, it, or 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 even fun even more fun is uh they you they can go into your electric thermostats right your smart thermostats and oh they're using too much energy so now you don't get to use that you can't use your energy anymore because you've used too much and global warming you're fucking you're a terrorist because you're using too much energy to heat your home um they're it goes further than just some bullshit ass tiktok yeah that shit is terrible i mean what what's your thoughts on this shit man that, i mean that's just basically what it is it's it's literally they want full control of everything you do 24 7 that's it i mean they'll say like oh you know it's so you know no bad people can do stuff but no it's they want control over everyone every single person they want to know what you're doing they want to know, you know, what side are you on politically? That's what they want to look at. What side are you on politically? Does, does this person support so-and-so? Does this person support so-and-so? Oh, let's shut their water off. Yeah. Let's uh, let's make sure they can't use any electricity when it gets cold. They can't warm themselves up because uh, they're on the other side. They're on the other aisle. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Edgar, you. Hey, yo, what's up, Edgar? And uh, uh, I don't know how to say your name. Unja Unja Tamarisi. Uh, what's going to end up happening is only the companies with enough money to bribe the politicians will be seen used. Agendas everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And Naders, thank you for that, Pfizer. I'll, you, I got you here. Brought to you by Pfizer. Fuck you. <laughs> Pay me. Thank you, Pfizer, for bringing us this podcast, for bringing us our politicians, for bringing us the the evening news. We appreciate all that you do. Oh yeah, and 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 vaccines. Thank you for that as well. I got two wells and city water. Come at me, bro. 
<laughs> Haters is already two steps ahead. Three steps ahead, baby. Uh but well, it, it it does seem like we're going into this Orwellian uh, dystopian future, where we're gonna have to answer to uh, where where the government is gonna be able to monitor and and uh, monitor and control our day to day activities. Uh, these fifteen minute cities are terrifying. They're going to be the first one. I think they're going to do over here in uh, Cleveland. I think that's where they're going to start it, or maybe. Uh, I think it is in Cleveland, um, <clears throat> where everything is going to be within fifteen minutes of each other. Of each, of each other, you're going to have cameras everywhere. You're going to have to have little passport, little fobs to get in everywhere. And it's for your own safety and your own security, uh, like the Patriot Act, right? <laughs> like mm. It's for our safety and security and to protect democracy. And yet, that it's, it sounds like the exact opposite of what it is. Um, it, it, and, and then they want to introduce this whole, uh, what are they called, the CDC, the, 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 the digital currency? Uh, you yeah, heard about those? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want that shit because then that all turns into a whole fucking like a human credit score system, and you don't want that shit. Yeah, and that's not good. I was just watching a a piece on. It was actually funny. It was on TikTok how they were talking about this dude who was uh he lives in China who he used too much energy for the month and so he couldn't take the fast train to see his family he had to take the slow the bus <laughs> to take the fucking bus because his social credit score was too 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 uh too small to or too uh, it too small what the fuck no he, he used too much of it is too low is what i meant is his yeah. social credit score was too low edgar hughes we were talking about dystopian future coming to america soon Go Pfizer. <laughs> Just wait for world tax. It's about to hit us. Well, and that's I was kind of hit hitting on that earlier with Saudi Arabia, um, uh, you know, using the yuan instead of the U.S. dollar, and what that's going to do to us because we've already printed off so much money. Our money is basically useless, other than that it's the world's currency, and so once it sort of becomes it doesn't become the world currency i think australia is not using the i think they're going to start using the the yuan now to buy energy um it it, it if our dollar is is not backed by oil or the world currency anymore then our we basically have our money is worthless and what does that mean you know and and then we're going to be begging if our economy takes a shit and, and it costs, you know, thirty thousand dollars to buy a loaf of bread, we're gonna there's gonna be so much crime, there's gonna be so much internal strife within this country that we're gonna be begging the country to put us on a digital currency system. You know what I mean? Like they're we're gonna be begging. Okay, and the, so the Fed's gonna be like, okay, well we can put money in your bank right now. Uh, it, these digital credits. And now you can go buy this, buy food now with these digital credits. But yet now, you know, you have, you're under constant surveillance. So if you buy too much alcohol, if you buy, you know, whatever it is, firearms, if you buy something that you're not supposed to be buying, now we have you buy the nuts. And I know that yep. sounds like conspiracy shit, right? It sounds like weirdo conspiracy theory shit, but... The, the the fact is that this shit already exists in other countries and they see how it works. They see how controlled their 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 citizens are because you can't criticize the government in China. You can't do that. You get disappeared. Billionaires. It, it doesn't matter if you have money. Billionaires come up missing in China. So it it, it, it to me, it seems like, wow, they really got a good handle on the whole situation Mexico is bricks. Did they go bricks? Damn. Is that how it is? Fucking Mexico is going bricks? That'd be fucked up. But a lot of people are going bricks. Do you know what bricks is? Jay? Nah, shit. 
Bricks is like the uh, no, nah, just asking about it. Oh God, I don't know, man. The, that would be that would be fucked up. Get ready, Mexico to join Bricks, and it could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, I didn't. God damn it. God damn it. I don't know anything. Uh, yeah, look, get ready. Mexico to join BRICS. Um, I think that that probably would be not great in our, for us, for America, because, um, tell, tell Jay I'm bricked up. I'm bricked up, oh, yeah. too, baby. Bricked up to the fucking ceiling. Um, I think that would be bad because Mexico is supposedly one of our trade partners. And yeah. um, so that would probably be bad for us. It just seems like we've gone around and fucked. America has gone over, gone around and fucked over other countries so much that they're just like, hey, you know what? Fuck those guys. <laughs> and as fucking as much as I love this country, there is a. We do have a darker side where it's it, where people are, you know, you have corporations driving politicians and, and policy. You have people who are making too much money off of being fuck it, you know, being the, the saviors of the world, meaning going in and bombing the shit out of them and then hiring our own contractors to go and rebuild their country after we destroyed it. So it's a uh, it does seem does seem like we pissed off a lot of folks in our time that would just be an easy way to slip into a border nation at war oh yeah infrastration gonna be wild yeah it, it i mean it, it's it's a wild time man it's a wild time that's why that's why platforms like like twitch uh and, and being able to play music and help people fucking just chill out that that's what makes it great <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's so much shit going on in the world, man. Yeah, and and there were fuck it, a musician's take on geopolitics. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's why y'all gotta I mean, kiss the homies. Uh, the man, like I think whenever it was like from 2000 and how would be 2009 to 2000, fuck, 2018. From 2009 to 2018, I was the most conspiracy theory person there was looked into everything whether it came from numerology when it came to religions when it came to just everything so i finally just had to take a step back and be like it is what it is it's gonna happen and uh i'm just gonna try to live my life because for those years i was so paranoid about everything yeah and, and it was just like man i just I, I didn't get to live you know and so, like, when the whole when the whole fucking COVID happened, when all that stuff started, coming, I was like, "Oh, I already knew this was coming." Like, this is stuff that I already knew back in two thousand nine, two thousand ten. They were planning for this shit, so right? It's like, well, so it's just like, but that's what you you know what? It's so fucking funny. It's so true. Like, I was just thinking that the other day. I was like, "Man, fucking Alex Jones has been talking about this for a really long time now." <laughs> it's, and you know, yeah. you hate or love Alex Jones. Uh, the dude has gotten some shit right, and he's, he's been like about ninety eight percent right on a bunch of shit. Like, I mean, it, like that that small two percent really fucked him over. But <laughs> he's been he's uh he's been pretty dead on about a lot of shit. Well, you know this whole like George Soros thing, right? Like he's been talking about George Soros for a long time, and now that's like being discussed in mainstream media, right? Like people are actually yeah. talking about these Soros backed. Uh, DAs and stuff in these in these left wing cities where you do see this high crime rate where they're soft on crime. Uh, even this DA who's taking Trump to to task right now, and I am not a fan of Trump. Fuck Trump in the face. I I can't stand the dude. Um, I I didn't vote for him. I fucking voted for fucking sleepy ass Joe Byron. Uh, against my better judgment, but I, I just felt like Trump was not doing it right for us. But in any case, it, it, it was a, uh, you know, this is a Soros-backed uh, DA who's sort of trumping up this case against him. Let's go, Brandon, exactly. And, uh, and, and it, it's so obviously a political move to try to get people to turn against him. But like, like, fuck it, like Joe Rogan, when they were trying to make Joe Rogan look like he was some anti-vaxxer fucking taking horse paste, uh, he got two million fucking subscribers. 
I I don't think that they're going to get the intended contended results that they want. I think this is only going to put more steam behind him because it's so obviously they're just trying to fuck with him. And it, yeah. it's just so fucking obvious. And so like yeah. I don't you know, I don't I again, I I don't think that you know, Trump should be above the law or anything. And if he did actually break some laws and stuff, yeah, it should be taken a test. But I don't think that what they're doing right now is, is going to work. And I, I, you know, they might arrest him and make a big thing of it, but they're basically doing what they were doing back. in like when he was running, people were giving him so much press. They're giving him so much bad press that people were just like, fuck you. Like we know what you're doing and, and yeah. it's happening again. And now CNN is over here fucking jerking off like, oh, yeah, more Trump stuff, because that was the only time that CNN was relevant when they were talking shit about Trump. So, I mean, again, don't take that as a fucking uh, an endorsement for Trump, because fuck that guy. But also fuck Joe Biden and fuck him, too. Like he's fucking a piece of shit, too. He's just a, a criminal, a, a longtime politician criminal and, and fuck them both. I can't stand either side of this fucking aisles, man. Fuck Biden even harder. <laughs> Ask Jay when you think he's he going to get canceled. When are you going to get canceled, Jay? I'll say probably like next year or some shit. <laughs> no, nah, you're wrong, son. Right now. Right now. <laughs> You've been canceled, baby. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it to be super stressed about conspiracy stuff all the time. You won't enjoy life. However, keep your eyes and ears open and don't let people walk over. And, and I think that's, I think that's what Jay was kind of getting at, right? Like you, you're like, you're you, like, you let that shit consume you. And that's all you think about it. it you're not yeah. going to have a good quality of life. That's not, yeah. that's no, no way yeah. to live. I was, I was looking at everything. I was seeing all the signs. I was like, Hey, this logo looks like something. Hey, this logo looks like something. Hey. And it's just like you, yeah, you just get consumed by it. So then that's when I was just like, man, I just need to back up and just like live. It's like, I already know what's around me. I already know what's around me. I already know what's going on. But I just need to live, and then when it comes time to like actually take care of it, then I'm already ready for it. <laughs> like I'll let the ARs do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like that's it. So I mean, yeah, it definitely and it, it definitely does like stress you out because you're you're trying to let people know, and then then everyone's just like, eh, like they just laugh it off, or they say, you know, you're you're thinking. You're, you're you're thinking too crazy, you know that that wouldn't really happen. We have all of these things online that can keep it from happening, but it's like there's stuff that's going on, like you said, there's stuff going on in other countries. Well, what makes you think it won't come here? Yeah, it's, especially if stuff starts like getting more lenient and everything like that, it's not good. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, 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 to it, I know so many fucking like super patriotic and mostly right leaning people who are just like oh that shit can't happen here blah 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 but it's like fuck you that it absolutely can our 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 politicians are so corrupt at this point I mean and they're not even hiding it it's like they're insider trading right in front of our faces and it's not just Nancy Pelosi it's fucking both sides of the aisle our 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 system is so fucking corrupt right now that they would sell out our fucking country in a heartbeat if they knew that they're going to come out on top of shit. So why, why would they? They're just people. They're just regular ass people. Again, they're just regular people who are fucking looking out for their own best interests. And they don't care if, 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 if plumber Joe in fucking in, in, in shit town, Ohio is out there fucking starving to death and his family's dying too. They don't give a shit. If they're willing to bomb a bunch of people that are overseas, that are, are, are in part of a wedding party, oops, oops, collateral damage, oops, you know, with some drone attack on some wedding party, oh, oops, you know, what? whoop, oop, oh my gosh. They don't give a fuck about them and they don't give a fuck about us. And I, I do agree with you, uh, Cathasaurus, that we do need to vote them out. But it's just, it just I don't know. It, it, feels, it feels hopeless. But there are good people out there that I, I think still want to do good in the world. But I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, they're, yeah, they definitely are. It's just we don't see them. They're not making noise or being super 
on social media about it. They're or just or they don't it. get covered by the media because yeah. if, if it's one thing that we learned about the pandemic is that the that these these news organizations are just mouthpieces for the government and in mm-hmm. turn mouthpieces for corporate interests. Yeah. And I mean, you have a lot of fear mongering all the time. Fear, yeah. like everything that's like bad is going to get publicity. Everything that's bad. So everyone's constantly in a constant state of stress a constant state of anxiety a constant state of worry it's just because that's what gets put out there and that's what everything just shows like constantly so that's why you have so many people now with anxiety and panic attacks and shit like that when i was growing up i never even heard about that shit if we made fun of people if we yeah can't... like what the fuck you worried about bitch like, stop. Yeah, we call them bitches or gay what are you gay <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't condone that at all. <laughs> my my fucking behavior as a child, I do not condone. Or, or yeah, it, it's like that was not uh, that is not the way. But still, yeah, we we we, it, we it, in a way, I do appreciate that we, that mental illness is something more that's more mainstream than it was. But yeah. then people like make an identity out of it, and that's all they are. It's like I'm neurodivergent. I can't go to work. I'm just like, oh, yeah, right, or, or like a lot of people just make excuses and they use that. They play that card. Be like, oh, well, I can't handle this situation because I have really severe anxiety, or I, yeah. or I get panic attacks and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, when I was around, no, you just fucking worked. You fucking <laughs> talk to people when you're at work. Talk to people. Like people don't have social skills anymore. Like yeah. no one, no one, and no one knows how in a, like uh, a high stake situation, no one knows how to do anything. They just panic. No. It's like, just, it's just like, what the fuck? Oh, dude, like, I did that today to somebody. I, I, I like every morning I, there's this, there's this young lady and like, you can tell that she's shy and and I say good morning and they'll like avoid my eyes and they'll, oh, they always, they're looking around. And, I'm, and I just say good morning, and the and it's like I'm not trying to make this person feel bad, but it's like you're never gonna get past these social blocks if you're not willing to fucking just be like good morning, you know? Like it's it's a literally we're just acknowledging our existence. I don't want anything from you. I don't want to fuck you. I don't care about you. Like I, like you know like you just yeah. someone I work with sometimes. And fucking this morning, I'm just like, hey, good morning. And I'm looking them right in the eye. And they just like turn and look away. I was like, good morning. And I said it again. I was like, okay, what? There's no good mornings? The like, oh, 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 good morning, good morning. And I'm just like, fucking soft ass young generation. <laughs> this fucking young ass generation is so soft. You can't even say fucking good morning to somebody. I, just I, a simple thank you or welcome when you open the door for someone. Like, it's just like, really? Like, yeah, we 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 definitely are an entitled class of people here in America, and and you know I've heard a lot of people even say you know maybe maybe America does need to fucking be taken down a peg, which I don't want that. I have a child. I don't want nobody. I, I want him to grow up in the same America I got to grow up. I I was a spoiled little kid. I mean I was poor. You know I grew up poor yeah. as fuck, but like. I still was able to fuck it. My parents still worked their asses off so I, I could have like a Nintendo, you know what I mean? And and fucking have plenty of food to eat and shit. So, mm. you know, I, I appreciate that. I don't want my son to have to go days without food because, you know, some fucking rich fuck decide to sell out their country. Yes, Cathosaurus. And I'm very glad that we're going to be talking. Cathosaurus, by the way, will be on the show on, on Monday. Uh, and uh, I am glad we're going to be talking exactly about this. Uh, you know what is great about life right now? Being able to watch Jay play from anywhere in the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. They people, but there's too many hands in the basket. Important rich hands, too. That's why things ain't as wild as they could be here. They don't give a fuck about us. They need us. Yeah, yeah. But But at the same time, we got food in our uh we got poison in our food and like jay you could probably speak on this a lot like the shit that that's in our food and like health wise uh it's pretty atrocious man i mean are are you pretty do you um are, are you pretty uh yeah, when it comes to nutrition, I I know stuff that's like banned substances that are like banned in other countries mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But we have them, you know, we have them just because, well, we can make a lot of money off of it. So like there's the same like I think it's like uh, there's a chemical in Twinkies 
that is used to make rubber flooring, mm. but we have it in food. Yeah. So it's like, but which it's banned in other countries. Right. Or like, you know, or like the dyes, you know, like the red 40 and the yellow, then the Gatorades and stuff like that. Those are all like banned in other countries as well. You have Frosted Flakes that are banned in countries. You got uh, Fruit Loops banned in countries. You have um, the instant potatoes, you know, the powdered potatoes. Those are banned in certain countries, like in Japan, I think. And then you have like, um, yeah, a lot of foods and stuff like that. Like, a lot of, obviously, a lot of preservatives and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's bad that we get fed. Um, but the beauty of the human body is if you just drink a lot of water. And you go exercise and you take your vitamins. That stuff really doesn't fuck with you as much. That's the only good thing. When you don't and you sit there, you, you, it, it's not good. If you stand still, if you sit still, you're not going to live long. Yeah. But if you move around, you do stuff, it, it's going to be good. I mean, the body adapts too. That's the thing about the human body. It adapts. I mean, I've eaten pizza before I had teeth, and I've eaten pizza every day for like literally my life. And uh, I'm I'm living proof that you you won't be obese eating pizza every day. <laughs> yeah, yo, it, it, look, man, I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, the the idea that uh, sitting around being stagnant is the it's it, it is literally the new smoking, and we're getting so soft, we're getting so fat. I just found out that I have high cholesterol now and I, I'm like, you know, it freaked me out a little bit because I have heart disease in my family. I have diabetes in my family. So I know that I know that if I don't do anything and I've 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 been very um active especially when I was in California, I, w- I was at a good weight, but I've been obese for a long time and right now I'm fucking obese. And, uh, but I'm down like 12 pounds since finding out that I had high cholesterol and literally I just stopped overeating every, like, like at the end of the day, I would, I would eat really well throughout the whole day. And then I would just fucking overeat at the end of the day. Just like, dah, 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 dah. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that that's was, what like Edgar said. A lot of people say they don't, they don't eat just to eat. They just keep eating. Yeah. You know? Keep eating. Keep yeah, eating. It's a drug it's... for me, man. It's literally a drug. And, and I can't, and that's, and I can't stand these fucking fat activists who are like, oh, fucking fat is, you know, like skinny, you can be healthy, you can be unhealthy skinny too, and like fucking, I, you can't body shame me, it's like the fuck I can't, because, <laughs> listen, I've, I've been like 300, I was 325 pounds in high school, and fucking, it was terrible, it was awful, uh, luckily, I had a personality, or else I would have been just com- this fat weirdo who's sweating all the time. I've gained and lost hundreds of pounds over the years. I I know what I know what it takes to lose weight. I know what it takes to gain weight. And fuck it, I know that when I am at a healthy weight and when I'm doing well and I'm eating good and I'm working out all the time, I fucking feel much better when I yeah. rather than when I'm fucking sitting around getting fat eating ho-hos and Twinkies and fucking pizza all the fucking time and not mm-hmm. working out. Like, I know the difference, and I know you're not happy with that weight. Like, I know you're not. Like, you're only happy because you get to feed yourself and you get that dopamine drip every time you eat a fucking pint of Ben and Jerry's. So you can't yeah. sit here and tell me you're happy every time you tie your shoes. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you're uncomfortable to bend over. You're uncomfortable to squat down and do shit. And I, you know, and and I'm not trying to fucking fat shame people, but it, but it is a, but but don't sit there and tell me the fucking that it's healthy to be fat or there's healthy fat people because there's a fucking study after study that you can go and read right now from credible places that say, hey, being fat leads to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, you know, like all these different things. So. Yeah, no, and it's a con- it's an endless cycle because you get depressed whenever you know that you're fat, but then when you're depressed, you eat, and then it's just an endless cycle. Like you're depressed because of the weight, but then you're de- you're eating because you're depressed, and you just keep going and keep going and you just keep gaining and gaining, and so it's just yeah, it's it's not a good cycle to be in, especially when people do eat like their feelings. Like people oh, do eat their feelings, so that's it's me like. All the way. So it's like, yeah, if you're feeling like shit, I mean, you all you want to do is just eat when you're, you know, it's like, it's not good. Not good at all. And, I, and I've been to that place too where um, 
I've been in a place too where it's like all I want to do is just fucking sit there and eat. I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to do anything. I just want to fucking sit here. I don't even want to have the TV on. I just want to just sit here and eat. And like, yeah, or I, I went into the depression too, where I was just drinking Coke after Coke after Coke after Coke. And just, you drink a whole like 12 pack, just like, and no, no problem. And I'm just like, that's not fucking good. So it's, um, yeah, it definitely can be understandable, but they have to break that. It's a mental barrier that they have to come like break through. It is. It really is. And, and, you know, it, again, it's, you know, if you're fat and you're trying to make a difference, it's like, you shouldn't feel bad about people no, saying yeah. these things, but like you should also take an initiative to get up and move and exercise can be free. You don't have to have an expensive gym membership. You can eat pretty healthily uh, on a budget. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is, yeah. Listen, I would fucking, I would die in them cheeks, son. I don't care. Raina could fucking sit on my face all day, baby. Mm, let's go. Uh, I think a lot of it can be lack of movement. I sometimes only eat once or twice a day and I don't lose. <laughs> Dude, I'm t- Listen, uh, Unja, I, I don't know how to say your name, however you want, but but I, I feel that like I, I feel that so much. And look, I would the, what was it? It was just Wednesday, it's fucking leg day. I hate, hate leg day. It's the fu- I hate it, I hate it so much. And, and I know that's not the right way to look at it, it's just, it, but I have to literally, I had to talk myself into going down there and fucking doing leg day. And I was like, okay, you gotta go do it. I hated it. Every moment of it, I fucking hated it. But it was, um, but I did it. And afterwards, I was like, well, I fucking did it. It wasn't that bad. And I fucking got it done. And, and I feel better now. And yeah. and, and I'm seeing results. I'm seeing direct yeah. results. I, all I have to do is not eat like a fucking, not eat like a maniac and fucking mm. keep working out. Like today, I worked out after work. Um, you know, just, just like, just did cardio. And it's like, hey, whatever. Um, it, it's just something you got to work into your life. It, you got to like make an effort. And and Edgar, I saw what you said, man. I, I've been in the same position where like depression and eating, it all sort of fucking, it accumulates and it makes you feel like a terrible fucking day, man. It, or, or a terrible person. And uh, no, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But, it, yeah, it, it sucks. And, you know, like, fuck it, I'm fat and I don't get offended. I feel it's more offensive when someone comes off, says, okay, how I am, shit. Even I know I'm not okay. How will fake? It is very fake. Be like, you're, you're beautiful the way you are. You're beautiful. It's when they, tell, when, when they start telling you that, oh, you're fine. You're okay. Mm-hmm. When they start saying that shit, you know something's wrong. No, you know something's they're wrong. They're not Get your the friend. Or, or, they've been, or they're just mind fucking fucked because they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're drinking the Kool-Aid of... Mm-hmm. you know of this woke bullshit that literally is fucking killing us and so it is it, it does seem like our government is trying to fucking actively kill us or at least fucking you know make us fat so we have to buy into a medical system and in the in the in the cycle and the circle of life keeps going right like because you get fat you have to go to the doctor you got all these diseases you got all these poisonous shit that's in your food that's causing cancer. Cancer is a huge, huge, huge fucking industry uh, in the medical field. And again, yeah. I mean, isn't there like 147 flowers that are in China that we can't that uh, that someone has a patent to and they can cure like diabetes, can cure all these type of diseases, but we can't have them because someone bought the patent to them. But I think there's like 147 flowers or like plants that could help with diseases but america can't touch them um, there's like all these different flowers and plants google google of course google is not going to tell you anything because google has also been yeah been fucking taken over by all this shit um yeah probably I, the there's, AI- there's stuff like you know that you could do or have that could help us but they purposely don't want us to have that because pharmaceutical company needs to make money and the way you make money is have sick people you don't want to cure something you just want to put a band-aid on it brought to you that, by pfizer fuck you, you pay me yeah thank you <laughs> pfizer thank you for all the things uh i know we kind of got sidetracked with all those poli- po- politicking and shit but uh i uh we do have a question and i'm not <laughs> 
first of all, Nader's asked, how much wood ch could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> and the answer is four. Um, but uh, we did have a question from uh, Anja. I'm sorry if I get. Do you know? Do you know how to say their name, Jay? Jay, um, I, I always mess up too. Unja, it's the way I see it. Uh, uh, do you always play chords? Unja, Unja, Unja. Thank you, Unja. Well, I, I, mean, I would have never got that. My 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 silly American tongue. Unja asks, uh, do you always play chords or do you ever play individual notes on the guitar, like solos and stuff? Or melodies? Uh, whenever, I guess, like, whenever I'm playing, like, the songs that I play, like, all the cover songs, I usually just play the chords. Um, but, like, whenever I was playing, like, in a metal band and stuff like that, it's just riffs, so individual notes all day. So, so uh, whenever I'm playing on Twitch, I'm usually boring and I just play the chords. But if I'm doing, like, metal stuff or making riffs, then I'm all over the place. So. Um do you uh are, are you a soloist can you do solos have you ever been a lead oh I, yeah i was able to do like arpeggios and solos and sweet picking and all that type sweet of picking? fun stuff Damn. yeah sweet picking, yeah it's just fun okay. but it's like um my brain doesn't like to work sometimes so <laughs> that takes too much thinking for me some people say you know it's muscle memory once you do all that over and over it, it does get easier but yeah. I've always just been super like laid back with my plan, so I'm like, I'll let someone else shine. Let me just play this rhythm real quick. <laughs> I'll be good. I got the rhythm. Uh, <laughs> no, I feel that though. Like guitar, I'm not the greatest soloist, when, but on keys, I, I fucking rip it sometimes. But I'm such a fucking pussy now. I don't. I don't have my chops are just gone. I, I haven't played yeah. when I was playing all the time. I was just you know, I, I I was doing my thing, but now I'm just like. I was a hot pianist. Now I'm lukewarm. Now I'm lukewarm. Nah. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's your answer, Unya. Um, uh, Jay does play individual notes when it's called for, but not on Twitch. because. Uh, uh, do I play any other instruments? So I play bass, drums, and a little bit of piano, but not much. There you go. There you go. Um, have you ever played drums in a band before? Uh, I... I not technically a real band, but like when me and my you know friends would hang out, we would jam out, and I'd play drums on there. Um, so it's fun. Um, Edgar wants to know why are why is Jay acting brand new? <laughs> uh, so does Jay think uh, I'm gonna get canceled? Uh, Edgar hopefully doesn't get canceled. Hopefully doesn't get canceled. You know what, Edgar? <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what happens when you fuck around here. And get <laughs> canceled. Get motherfucking canceled. Uh, yeah, where's peep? Where's Pepe and the other drummer? <laughs> I don't know what happened to Pepe. Pepe left. I don't. I don't know. Pepe. Pepe came in hard with a troll, and then and then that was about it. <laughs> they were just like troll, chill, maybe troll a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Fucking. Um, we should probably let you go it's been a while and uh, I, I do have to pee so we'll we'll, we'll end it all here uh in, in, a, in a bit I, I do want to do another would you rather just because uh sometimes they're fun so let, let's do an, a couple would you rathers and if you guys have any other questions you want to ask them before we end go ahead and drop them in the 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 question thingy in the channel point um Okay, would you rather find out that your toilet is self-aware or find out your best sex toy is an actual transformer? <laughs> so stupid. Sex toy transformer because then I can go like do shit with them afterwards. <laughs> we can hang out. <laughs> we can party and shit. <laughs> oh, Oh, that's what I was going to say. Uh, they just found out AI just found a way to cure cancer in 40 minutes. And fucking uh, that just so everybody just just so everyone knows how frightening AI is going to be. They they uh, that the, it is curing cancer. So, you know, whatever. You're going to turn into a vajankle. <laughs> I don't know what a vajankle is, but that's amazing. Naders wants to know why it hurts when he pees. 
uh, your prostate might be acting up. Yeah, go check out your prostate, bud. Uh, I know that. Uh, let me see. Um, Flomax might help. Flomax. You know, I was because I'm I'm actually because I'm middle aged now. I I fuck it. I'm having slow streams, and so like, uh, my prostate I guess is fine, but but uh, they put me on Flomax, and it was fucking up my my lifts, bro. So like, I stopped mm-hmm. taking it because it because it lowers your blood pressure. Gotcha. And so I wasn't able to fucking I wasn't able to get the the lifts on because I gotta do my lifts, baby. I can't be fucking around. Um, let me see. Uh, Unya asked another question. Mighty, mighty, thank you so much for that gifted so I appreciate you. Mata, mata. Hey. Um, let me see. Uh, Unya wants to know, do, do you do much songwriting? I know you have a few of your own tunes, but do you prefer writing your own songs or singing someone else's? Ooh, good question. Unya. Um. I do, I have a lot of songs I haven't released that I've written. So I do like writing out like music. I do like doing all that stuff. But I do feel it is pretty fun when someone gives me something that they have. And then I can like mess with it a little bit and then um, have a finished product with it. Like say they have something. So I find it fun both ways. I do like writing. I do like doing my own stuff. But I also do like when someone gives me an idea or if someone has a song they have written, but they don't know how to finish it or don't know how to like um, make a progression with it or something like that. I was like helping in that way. So yeah, I guess um, both are, are pretty fun for me. Both are pretty fun. Um, Mighty Mighty, thank you again for another gifted sub. My goodness to Dundo Wizard. Dundo Wizard. Okay. I don't know how to say that. Uh, thank you again, Mighty Money. I appreciate you. I, I really do. Um, okay, let's do let's do a couple more of these, and then let's let uh, let's let Jay go pee and and probably eat some more food to feed those twenty two inch pythons. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> Unya, thank you for being here and hanging out and 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 riding along with us. All right. Uh, would you rather have to update your genitals? Wait, that gen, genitals. Okay. Would you rather update your genitals operating system every few months and usually just as you need them, or have to store your sex life on the cloud but you have two gigs of memory? What the fuck? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I got I got more than two gigs of memory, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go ahead and do the first one. First yeah, one. I mean, I feel like general up uh, operating system updates sounds like a good thing. Maybe I would be yeah. able to get a stronger stream of P. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, this is funny. Um, would you rather? Have your urine open a door to another dimension or poop your way through a wormhole in space? Poop through, poop my way through a wormhole because that means I could survive a wormhole and most people can't. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. I think I would go for urine for other dimensions because like uh, I would like to see what else is out there I mean I've taken DMT I know there's something else out there uh, would you rather have one coconut sized nut or nine walnut sized nuts um, probably nine walnut sized nuts how big is a walnut it's like that right yeah yeah it's like that So have I, have I, yeah, I think that'd be better because I, st- I still think a coconut would be bigger than that so i don't want that shit getting in the way oh shit naders with a thousand biddies naders what's up baby let's go let's go now i'm now i'm just a shitty morning dj why are you gay (laughs) um (laughs) okay 
<laughs> thank you, Naders. I appreciate those thousand biddies. And Unya, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let Jay get on with this day, but uh we've been asking everybody uh what is uh, and i agree with you unya that was a good uh, that was a deep answer for such a silly question what <laughs> would you uh what is the best advice you've ever received the best advice um i mean it's a it's it's a simple one but literally just don't compare yourself to anyone that's beautiful that's it that's it don't compare yourself to anyone and just do you and uh good things will come I'm I'm all for that. That that is a beautiful way to end this podcast. Jay, thank you so much for coming on the show and 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 being uh, being present with us and and sharing your insight on the world. Uh, for sure. It, now you're going to be streaming tomorrow night, correct? Uh, it'll probably it'll probably be tomorrow, um, like earlier in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Probably like around like twelve Central Time. Um, yeah, we'll be doing a celebration stream. We hit a uh, 1400 followers so we'll just do a little celebration stream for that okay. tomorrow and, um and and uh yeah because uh, wrestlemania weekend is this weekend so uh i'm gonna be busy with that so <laughs> you, got, you got the pre-show and post-show you gotta watch yeah. you got the whole thing baby all yeah, right <laughs> a best advice was to watch peaceful warrior got it from a client it changed my life i read the book too peaceful warrior that's a good peaceful idea. warrior I've never heard of that. I'm I'm gonna write it down though. Thank you, Unya. All right, all right, Jay. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, Everybody, man, no problem. Give thank you for having me. Man. Oh, of course. Anytime, man. Anytime. If you got a new thing coming out and you want to promote, let me know, and we'll we'll have you back. Anytime, man. Everybody, put your hands together for Jay. Uh, 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 uh.